Good morning, Fred. Look at us starting two minutes early. Two minutes early? I was five minutes early for work this morning as well. What is going on? Who am I? Who am I and what have I done with myself? <laughs> I don't have chocolate today, unfortunately. I normally do on a Saturday because Saturdays are horrible. Um, <laughs> I was actually good. I was going to go back out onto the shop floor after I clocked out to get chocolate, but it was so crammed out there. There were so many people. It was so busy and just so horrible. And I just couldn't face it. But then I remembered I had Halloween treats. I've got Halloween treats in my cupboard. And you know what? I'm not going to be able to eat all of them on Halloween because I'll be sick. So I thought, you know, Halloween weekend, let's start on the Halloween tre treats. So I've got a plate of Halloween treats. I have got, I've got two fiendish fancies, which are just French fancies only with orange icing on them, and then they call them fiendish fancies. I've got a mini bonfire log, which is just a mini roll with honeycomb in it. And I think that's actually for bonfire night, not for Halloween, because it's called a bonfire log. So I think it's for bonfire night. But you know what? They're close enough to each other. They're practically the same thing these days anyway. I've got a, I've got a, uh, <laughs> an Egyptian mummy loaf cake, right? So it's just like a little mini loaf cake, not like a big one. It's like a, a little mini loaf cake with white icing on it, but all done like crisscross to look like the bandages on, an, on a mummy. And then it's got little googly eyes on it. Yeah. And then I've got a Mr. Kipling chocolate and orange slice. Chocolate and orange cake slice. Because chocolate and orange is big around Halloween because it's orange. Yeah, and I've also got a mince pie because might as well throw a bit of Christmas in there. We've got Halloween and bonfire night already represented, so we might as well throw Christmas in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's what we're starting with. Starting with a, a rundown of my snacks, as we always do. Um, I'm not, you know what? I've not always been the biggest lover of mince pies. Do you have mince pies over there? Like sweet mince pies. It's not not like savoury mince pies. Like you know, sweet mince pies that you have at Christmas. Because I'm not sure. I know you, there's something that you don't have that we do around Christmas. I can't remember what it is. It might be mince pies. But I'm not, I've never been like the biggest fan of them. But then at work we do these like shallow ones. So they're not like, they're not really deep. They're just like, kind of, they've just got like a little bit of filling in them. I quite like them actually. I quite like them. Uh, what do you have? Burrito, eggs, fruit, last night's leftover barbecue. Right? That sounds like my kind of breakfast, Fred. <laughs> just shove a load of stuff on a plate. Those are the kind of breakfasts I have. Actually for my tea tonight, I've had, um, I've had uh, caramelized red onion sausages. And, um, um, potato waffles that I did in the toaster. Yeah. <laughs> the tea of champions, that is. <laughs> it's what I had. I was just like, you know, what? I can't be asked cooking anything proper. And then I was going to do some, like, uh, peas with it to have something a bit healthier. And then I was like, no, I don't want any. <laughs> some days you just, some days you just, uh, uh, you just, you just, you know, you just don't fancy green stuff, do you? You're just like, no, I'm just going to eat processed crap today. Don't have mince pies. No, I didn't think you did. Very big over here around Christmas. Like, really big. Like, they go in the shops. We have half an aisle solely dedicated to mince pies at the minute in the shop. Different types of mince pies. You get ones with rum in. You can get ones that are iced. Ones that are not iced. Ones with, like, different stuff in. You can get ones with, like, cinnamon and ones with different spices and things like that. There's literally a million types of mince pie. <laughs> yeah, like, half, half an aisle's worth of just, just mince pies at the minute. Uh, oh, common misconceptions here. Hello. Um, okay, that's two of them. We're ready to start. We're ready to go, man. Let's go on to the game. Right, so, welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. Last time, um, I can't remember. what We didn't do much, did we? We sort of did some side quest hunting, I think. And I can't remember what we did. We did Shale's personal quest, didn't we? Uh, did we do anything else? We must have done other stuff. I just cannot think what it was at the top of my head. Um, off the top of my head. Uh, we did Flemeth, didn't we? We killed Flemeth. Um, uh, oh, Fred's going to a horror film festival. Oh, very seasonal. Lovely. Do you know what? I always watch around this time of year, and I've already watched them. My two go-to Halloween films. Yeah, you know, everybody else watches, like, you know, horror films about murderers and ghosts and things like that. I watch um, Maleficent, which is my favourite Disney film of all time, and Cruella. Those are my two go-to Halloween movies. Everybody else is watching horror movies. I watch Disney villain movies. That's what I watch. 
<laughs> Love a bit of that. Yeah, I like a bit of uh, sort of... I, I was going to say dog fantasy. I don't think you could call it dog fantasy. It's Disney, but you know what I mean. I like that sort of stuff around this time of year. Kind of like, you know, witches and stuff, but a bit kind of happy. Not horror. I find horror a bit boring, actually, to be honest. Um, it's a hard thing to get right, horror, I think. It's a very... It's a hard thing to get Anyway, um... um uh, what are we doing today? Yes, stay focused, Magpie. We are going to go and do Return to Ostagar. I don't know whether that's going to take up the whole live stream. Um, Scooby-Doo movies, says Common Misconception. Yes. I've got the majority of Scooby-Doo on DVD, you know. I've got all the originals. I've got the original um, animated ones. And then I've got What's New Scooby-Doo, which is the one I used to watch when I was a kid. And then there's another one that I've got, but I can't remember what it is. And then I've got the two live action films, which should definitely have got like, you know, they should have had like four or five films out of that because they were so good. Um, and then Nickelodeon, I think it was, did a couple of like prequel live action films, which is like about how the gang got together. And I've got them as well. They're actually quite good for a couple of random little Nickelodeon films. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love a bit of Scooby-Doo. Oh, that's a good idea, Common Misconception. I should watch a bit of Scooby-Doo around this. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good idea, that. Um, uh, stop distracting me. I'm trying to talk about Dragon Age. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about what we're actually doing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to go and do Return to Ostagar. I don't know whether that's going to take up the whole live stream. Um, I sometimes... Things can take ten times as long when you're streaming them because, you know, I just get kind of involved talking to you all about non-track and age-related stuff. Um, so that might take up the whole stream. If it doesn't, we'll go... We've still got some side quests that need finishing up, I think. Now, did I sort out my inventory last time? Uh, it looks like I mostly did, yes. Yeah, I think we, like, equipped everybody, didn't we? We've got the robes of possession which are not as good as the Reaper's Vestments. Um, oh, the Dead Coat of Arms. Yeah, I was going to give that to somebody because it's kind of good. We've only got Alistair we can give it to, haven't we? Oh, hmm. So that's one Constitution and one Stamina Regeneration in Combat versus one Will Power 3 Defense, 15 Electricity Resistance and 2 Attack. I think the one he's got is actually better in it. And then I was going to... I don't think Shale is actually strong enough to equip... Um, her weapons. No, she's not. <laughs> Bless her. 38 strength. What's she at at the minute? 35. Okay, we need one level up. One level up and she'll be good. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just reading the chat. We're just talking about stuff to watch around Halloween. <laughs> um, anybody ever watch Mona the Vampire? That was a kid's show. I don't know if that was an over here show or an over there show. Because uh, we got we, we got like a lot of American kids shows over here that we used to watch. Stuff like Arthur and Rugrats and stuff like that. I used to love Rugrats. Um, I don't know if you get like our shows over there though. Probably not, I imagine. But I don't know what Mona the Vampire was. I don't know whether that was an us show or a you show. I can't remember. I can't remember what the accents were. Um... It was about a girl who thought she was a vampire and, and she had this group of friends and they would, they would all like dress up and she dressed up as a vampire and then th there was another one who was like a princess and another one was I think an alien or something like that and they would like solve mysteries and stuff like that. But then as you got older and you were watching it, you could see what they were actually doing because it was, it was like it was the kids' imaginations and the stuff that was going on was actually like really normal. Like it would be like, oh, I don't know, like... I don't even know, but it would be like a, a really normal situation, like somebody had a flat tire or something like that, and they needed to change the tire or something like that. But then, the, in the kids' imaginations, it became like this whole big adventure, and they had to like save the world from aliens and things like that. But then it was actually just like a really normal scenario. But so you were kind of seeing what was going on inside their heads, and they had these like alter egos where she was a vampire and and all of this kind of stuff. But you didn't twig that when you were a kid. It was only when you get a bit older and you watch it, and you're sort of like, oh, I see what they've done. That's actually quite clever. <laughs> I think that would be good Halloween viewing. Mona the Vampire. Um, uh, 
Uh, right, okay, let's actually get on. Right, I'm go I want to have a little chat with everybody because we don't need to sort our inventory out or anything like that. We're all sorted with that. I need to have a little chat with everybody, see where we are. Because it takes, it takes people a bit of a while to turn up on Saturdays, doesn't it? <laughs> so while we're waiting for the rest of the gang to get here, we'll have a little chat with everyone. You wish to talk? Ah, good. I have a question for you. How well versed are you in poetry? Antivan poetry, specifically. Oh, my boyfriend wants to talk to me about poetry. Okay, I know nothing of poetry. Uh, this is your question. I know a good poem when I hear it. I don't really have time for this. Yeah, I know a good poem when I hear it. I think I think Dora Bella has an, an artistic ear, you know, um, lurking underneath that rough exterior. I think she could be a bit of a poet at heart. <laughs> well, trust me then. You won't be hearing it now. It was recited to me, as I recall, by a rather wealthy target of mine. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> The symphony I see in the it whispers songs to me. Songs of hot breath upon my neck. Songs of soft sighs by my head. Songs of nails upon my back. Songs of thee come to my bed. Okay. <laughs> okay hell. Oh dear, what is that sex poetry? Um this was told you by a target. But yeah, this was told to you by a target, Zevran. Oh, I know, I know. I couldn't believe that she thought this would actually convince me to spare her. <laughs> I had sex with her anyway, but that goes without saying. She still had to die. The poem was amusing at the time, however, and thus I've always remembered it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm eating my mince pie. Um, why are you telling it to me? So you thought you'd seduce me with it? You killed her anyway. Ooh. Um. <laughs> um. Um. I don't know. What should we say? Is that's kind of easy to, um, you know, offend. So I'm always a bit wary about talking to Zephyrin. Also, I'm kind of focusing on eating my mince pie. It's really nice mince pie. You know what? For somebody who does not like mince pies, these mince pies are actually really good. But like a normal mince pie, I wouldn't like it. But these ones, they do at work. I think it's because there's more pastry than there is filling. And I'm a bit of a pastry lover. Anyway. <laughs> when I was a kid, whenever we had, like, anything with pastry, either sweet pastry or savoury pastry, it didn't matter, I would always, like, whatever the filling was, I would just, like, scoop the filling out and just eat the pastry. And I used to say that when I grew up, I wanted... <laughs> I wanted to own, like, a bakery, and I would call it the Empty Pie Shop and just make pastry cases for people who prefer the pastry to the actual filling. Because <laughs> I'm that person, I'm just like, I'll eat pastry all day long, but then I'm like, why do you ruin pastry by putting filling in it? <laughs> anyway. Um, 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 yeah, let's go number two. Mm, now that is a thought, isn't it? Would it work? Mmm... It might do but better it not interested at all. Yeah, it might. I think I can hardly say not interested at all. You've already slept with it once, love. I'll have to keep that in mind. Personally, my preferred methods of seduction are a bit more tactile. Here I thought you might be chilled up by some naughty poetry. You simply look so unhappy. Such an unflattering expression for such a lovely face. <clears throat> uh, you think I'm lovely, do you? I don't feel unhappy. These aren't the best of times, you know. I appreciate the effort. Don't bother. Um. Ooh, let's go. Ooh, let's go. Option one. Ah, who wouldn't? You're the kind of woman that stalks the lust in men and other women alike. <laughs> Surely you know this and are playing with me. Me, I tend to make the best of whatever situation I find myself in, stealing what moments I can. It's served me well most days. You might learn to do the same. Okay. Do you know what? No offense to Dora. I love her. I think she's adorable. But I don't, I don't exactly look at her and think that she stirs lust in everybody who walks past her. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she's probably quite feisty. You know, <clears throat> between the sheets. I can imagine that of her. But, uh, <laughs> um, right. Uh, I think I do the same. Actually, I'll keep that in mind. Served you well. Don't be an idiot. Thanks for the patronising suggestion. No, I think I do the same, Seth. I think me and you are on the same wavelength. I think, you know, we had somewhat similar upbringings. Kind of. We both kind of came from nothing. You know, don't really have much to show for our lives except 
skills with blades, you know. So yeah, I think I think we're on the same wavelength. Oh, and I learn something new about you every day. Enough poetry, I think. The time has come for traveling and the murdering of villains and whatever else passes for adventuring these days. Okay, we got no approval from him whatsoever. Like seriously, or are we at max? We might be at max. Uh, Zevran, we are at a uh, hundred, yeah. Uh, what's he got that's taking his uh, things down? He's got minus two to his strength and he's got minus three to his willpower. Zevran, my love, what are you wearing? Uh, oh, it's the Blood Gorge Army. Oh, yes, of course, but it was the 12th constitution we wanted. That's all right then. Right, okay. I was going to talk to everybody, wasn't I? I just talked to Zevran. <laughs> <laughs> then I was gonna leave. Okay, let's talk to everybody. What's on your mind? Um. Yeah, can we cure you? Win. Cure me? What? Am I sick now? Uh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're a little dead. <laughs> Even you know that you cannot cure the dead, and I'm not the only one dying. You are too. <laughs> I'm just more efficient about it. Ah, child, your concern is heartwarming. But death comes to everyone, and it is not something to fear. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, Dora would rather be alive. She's that kind of person, isn't she? People fear not death, but having life taken from them. Many waste the life given to them, occupying themselves with things that do not matter. When the end comes, they say they did not have time enough to spend with loved ones, fulfill dreams, to go on adventures they only talked about. But why should you fear death if you are happy with the life you have led? If you can look back on everything and say, yes, I am content, it is enough. Uh, okay. Yeah, because we always want more. I think, you know, that's probably the experience that Dora has had in our life. That people always want more. Some people will never be content and will always want more. I think I've led a good life, a full life, and I, for one, am not afraid of death, whatever it may bring. They say that when you die, your spirit travels through the fade and returns to the maker. And after that, we'll see, won't we? Okay, right. <clears throat> Who else do we want to talk to, I think? We've kind of exhausted our conversations with most people. Haven't we? Have we spoken to Morrigan since Flemeth? Yes, we have, haven't we? Because we had the, the the sister conversation, didn't we? He is quite a character, your Severin. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> Severin is not mine by any stretch of the imagination. Um, he's interesting and fun to be with. What do you mean by that, Lil? He seems to seek pleasure above all things, but there is more to him, isn't there? He is more complex than he lets on. Uh, yeah, true. Most people are. I feel that it is in my interest to study those I travel with. And Zevran deserves special scrutiny, seeing that he tried to kill you. But it seems you trust him, judging from your closeness. If you do, then I do too. You haven't led us astray yet. That aside, you do have good taste. He's an attractive one. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't be opposed to you joining in the fun. Thanks, I rather like it myself. He's been claimed my apologies. Do you know what? <laughs> yeah, we'd be open to it. We've done it with uh, Isabella. Why not with you? That's an interesting idea. I'd have to think about that. Oh, blimey. Okay, she didn't say no. Um, I don't think that could actually like officially happen, but we could headcanon it, couldn't we? We could headcanon that Liliana occasionally just joins in. Yeah. Yeah, Dora and Zev both very open-minded people. Um, um, okay. Uh, right, I think we've pretty much exhausted all the conversations with Morrigan for the most part. I really can't be asked talking to Alistair. Let's talk to Ogren. Come to talk to old Ogren, have you? Don't know why. Oh, what's wrong, Ogren? Nothing. I'm fine. Just uh, got a hornet my eyes all. Did you want to talk about something? Uh, sorry. I'm eating cake. Um, <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I'd like to know more about you, Ogren. What about? Um. Ooh. You ask him about the surface. It's starting great. First, I was a little queasy with all that air, but there's just so much of it. No one has any idea who you are, or what you're doing, and the ale. Ooh, who'd have thought ale made with grain? <laughs> Aye, the surface is great. It's like a big, bright world of filth without a ceiling. My kind of place. Hey, let's go find something to kill, huh? All this talk makes my hands twitchy. Well, that was a good heart to heart we just had one. <laughs> okay, should we get going then? <clears throat> I know we haven't talked to everybody, but you know what? How long have we been going on now? 20 minutes, man. We haven't even left the camp. Right. Ostagar. So, it's a must that you have to take wind, Alistair. Yeah. Um, should we go with my usual and take Morrigan? Although she disapproves if you um, burn Caelan's body, which is weird. Um, but there are some tough fights and I, I do like having both my majors. Um... Sorry, I'm reading the chat, don't mind me. Um, according to YouTube, there's only one of you. I wonder which one of you doesn't think is real. <laughs> which one of you is a ghost? <laughs> um, uh, the hound was at girl, says Fred. Yeah, I know, but come on. <laughs> They're really hard fights. And he's, he's, he's not that much use, to be fair. Um, no offence, doggy. Um... Oh, we could bring Zev, because we've, you know, we've kitted him out quite a lot now. And, you know, he has my boyfriend and everything. Oh, I could bring the hound. Should we bring the hound? We'll bring the hound and see how it goes. We'll bring the hound. It's fine. We'll bring the hound. Yeah. You know, he can return to Ostagor as well. Right, okay. Bad Lauren's lands. Nearly finished my cup of tea, but I've still got cake left. You can't eat cake without drinking tea at the same time, can you? That's just like, you know, break some kind of ancient law. Uh, take a closer look at the unarmed man. Uh, take a closer look at the guards. Take a closer look at the unarmed man. You are surprised to recognise the uniform of King Kaelin's honour guard. A memory comes to you. You fought alongside this man at Ostagar. Take a closer look at the guards. The guards wear the uniform of Ban Lauren, uh, a minor lord, well known and little loved for the fluidity of his allegiances. Join the fray or wait for the guards to leave. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but I think Doyle's the type who would jump in. The guards. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So the only difference that makes that choice uh, of whether you jump in or not is that if you wait for them to leave, you don't have to fight them. <laughs> That's literally it. Um, but you know, you get you get extra, um, what should I call it? Mm -hmm, experience for killing them. How do we get down there? Jesus, we go down this way, there we go. Uh, we can do a little soul rot bomb, uh, which got me, but that's fine. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Um, I'm reading the chat, don't mind me. Um, <laughs> I need to stop pausing the game to read the chat. This is why things end up taking so long, man. I feel naked without Morrigan, I really do. <laughs> I don't like not having Morrigan. <laughs> like, you know, going through the deep roads without Wynn was awkward, but fine. But not having Morrigan, honestly, I do. I feel, I feel like I'm missing an arm or something. Uh, but yeah, the fact that she disapproves it when if you burn Kaelin is is that always bothers me when I take her to Ostagar. So I kind of don't like taking her to Ostagar because of that. But you know, anyway, 
they go down. Get any exciting loot off them. Ooh. I still keep forgetting to pickpocket people. Jesus. <laughs> I think I've said that in every single live stream. I keep forgetting to pickpocket people. And then I never pickpocket anybody. Um, okay. Collect all this stuff. I know that guy's dying down there, but you know. I need to loot all the things first. <laughs> Uh, El Ricky, I'll be with you in a minute, darling. Uh, right, I think that's everything. Okay, hello. Up close, the man's face is unmistakable. You remember him as El Rick Mar yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, a member of Caelan's Honor Guard at Ostagar and close confidant of the king. Thank you. I didn't expect the band's men to notice my escape so quickly. I tried to hide here in the woods, but there wasn't time. Now I'm a dead man. Uh, what do you mean there wasn't time? You were there in Ostagar. You know how things went. For me, it was either this, or die in some dark spawn's belly, or, or be hung as a deserter. Uh, you deserted? I dare say most people think the same of you and me, if not worse. I fled the battlefield when Loghain betrayed us. I abandoned my men, and they died. And Caelan with them. He was my king, my friend, maker. All that time in Ban Loren's prison. And I couldn't stop thinking about all they suffered that one dark night at Ostagar. Um, <laughs> we're here all day listening to you, Wayne. <laughs> to be fair, that's a, that's a thing Dora would say, isn't it? Estimates more generous than my own, but perhaps I can make it worth your while. If it's the likes of you who sees me to my final hour, perhaps things happen for a reason. The king entrusted me with the key to the royal arms chest. If anything were to happen to him, he said, it was vital I deliver it to the wardens. Uh, okay, do you still have this key? The maker has a sense of humor, doesn't he? I suppose it's for the best, however. Had I kept it, it would be in Van Loren's hands by now. But you said Caelan entrusted it to you. I was afraid. I thought I would lose it on the battlefield, so I stashed it in the camp. Please, it's probably still there. Yeah, okay, where? The key's behind a loose stone at the base of a statue. I'll draw a map for you, so you'll know where to search. You'll be taking me along, won't you? Call me sentimental, but I left behind some dark spawn that really deserve a sword through the middle. The events at Ostagar still haunt my thoughts, Warden. If that is where we are headed, I would like to accompany you. It is vital that the King's documents do not fall into the wrong hands. As for Merrick's sword, it's too powerful to be pawed at by those monsters. Same for the King's other arms and armor. And... And if you happen to find Caelan's body, see it off. He was our king. He shouldn't be left to rot amidst the Darkspawn's filth. <laughs> okay. Uh, doggy needs a level up. No, Doggy needs lots of level ups. Um. Yeah. That should do us. And then we can. That's it. That's it. He's fully upgraded. He's got all of his abilities. And. We can now head down to Ostgar, right next to Flemeth's hut. God, the gang are taking their time turning up today, aren't they? Jesus. It's weird uh, on Saturdays, it always seems to take a while for people to turn up, and yet on Tuesdays everybody's just there. I would kind of thought it would be the other way around. Oh, it's the meteorite! We've got the How meteorite. The child survived that. The crater is still smoking. It's a boy. Five fingers, five toes. That's all that matters to me. The Maker has answered our prayers. Let's go home, Marta, and raise the Tyke as our own. Mm-hmm. Little Superman uh, reference there. And we can go and get ourselves some uh, meteorite metal ore. Yay! We can make star fun. All right, all right. Uh... <clears throat> oh, hello. 
It's a nice welcome, isn't it? Uh, okay, so nothing too terrifying so far. Uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat. Don't worry. <laughs> Would it be funny if that kid turned up in a later game? I mean, probably not as like a main role or anything, but just as like you know, it's like a little reference, little codex entry or something. And what exactly are you implying, Alistair? What? What? No, nothing. No, I just thought. You just thought I might be an expert at feeling old and could share some sage advice. I, I just mean that I was a different person then. I believed him, you know? That it would be a glorious battle that we'd win. I did too. We were all a little bit younger the last time we were here. Well, not you. You've always been old. With lips like that, son, you'll be lucky if you live to be half my age. <laughs> oh, I love their little sort of mother-son kind of relationship they've got going on. Um, yeah. I like coming back to us. God. It's cool, isn't it? Uh, they've managed to make it look like prettier than what it was. <laughs> With all the snow and everything. And, oh yes, this was the war council. We stood around this table. Uh... <laughs> Superman gets raised by the canary, says Fred. <laughs> I mean, that, that would be a hell of a leap, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, it would be cool if like, yeah, that, that turned up as a little reference later on. I was, I was going for Morrigan to try and get me Code of Cold, and I was like, Morrigan's not there. <laughs> Uh, it's all right. We'll be we'll be okay, guys. We can we can live without Morrigan. We can do it. I need to turn the police sound down. Jesus. Okay. Um. Yeah. Wind just isn't the same, you know. Just not the same. Well, they should just have Crushing Prison now. So you know, she's better than what she used to be. Uh, anybody else love the hopping ravens in the game? Yes, I love those ravens. Oh, there's a flipping uh, emissary over there. Did not notice the emissary. Should probably have noticed the emissary. Uh, do you know what? I keep forgetting she's got bloody fireball. There we go. And stone fist. I'm not concentrating. That's the problem. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Uh, give Alistair a bit of a heal. And then if we all just go and attack that guy, because he's the big scary one. And... <coughs> You need to give yourself a bit of a heal as well, there we? Dear me, I think we've got him down, I think we've got him down, we've got him down. Um. <laughs> you know what's funny, when I started doing these live streams and like the first few got maybe like, what? Maybe two or three viewers who were like, you know, there the whole way through. And it was sort of like, oh my god, that's like... That's like three people wins just stuck in a fighting stance. Look at that. Oh my god, she's ready to take someone on. She's up for a up for a scrap is win. <laughs> she's like, yeah, these dogs won't well, stand a chance. Look at me. But yeah, I, I was sort of like, oh my god, like two or three people are watching it all the way through. Oh my god, that's amazing. And now, when there's only like two of you, I'm sort of like, oh, it's not what you talk about, is it? <laughs> just two of you? Jesus. <laughs> by dark spawn and thick with their rot it was his i know i feel it too but he is not the first king to ever fall in battle or even the first to fall to the dark spawn yes but this wound cuts deeper and it will bleed longer but we must keep moving no doubt the dark spawn are eager to give us plenty more reasons to mourn yeah so we are collecting Kaylin's um Armor. Look at her little waddle that she does when she's in our fighting stance. It's so adorable. Um, <laughs> we got the joining chalice, which we can give to Alistair as a gift, which I always think is a bit weird. Like, really? Would you want the joining chalice? Is that a thing you would want? 
I, I don't know. It's always seemed a bit odd to me that you can do that, but yeah, that's the thing we can do. Um. Uh, I'm reading the chat, don't let me. Right, so, where I'm lost. Where did I come through? I came over the hill, did I? Yes, I came over the hill. <laughs> My god, guys. Um, her little walk is... is uh, just, uh, look, look at her, look at her! <laughs> Can't get over it. What if I make her cast something? If we take that off. And then... Do, 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 cast that again. See if it'll knock her out of it. There we go. She could walk normally again. Um, uh, right. So, getting through here. Mm -hmm. There's the major's chest that we robbed the first time, and apparently they've put stuff back in it. Because, you know, why would um, oh god, that's that's a lot of people. There's a forge master over there. Win, I need your uh, I need your your fireball that I keep forgetting that you've got. That's definitely gonna get Dora Bella. Oh, 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 oh. That's alright though. That's alright. She can handle it. She can handle it. Um Yeah, and then if we can get Dora to use a bit of a grenade. That really didn't do that much. They're quite tough. Not quite tough. We're using acid flask, and then she's just dying at this point because she's <laughs> she keeps grenading herself. Um, uh, if you use another one, actually, it should finish them off. There we go. Take yourself another health for this. Uh, whoa! Wind just got knocked on our ass. Bloody hell! They're really going at her, aren't they? Jesus. Uh, mind blast. There we are. And there we go. Okay, so. Um, Fred shouting grenades at me. I used like three in a row, Fred. Like, Jesus. What do you want from me, lad? Launch a bit of a fireball with this idiot. And then do a bit of a group heal. Uh, is he on his own or does he have like backup? Oh, he's on his own. He's on his own. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought he would have more friends hiding at the back, but apparently not. Do a bit of a stone fist. Nice, right, can down easy, man. Can do an easy. Oh, and there's more people over there. I knew, that, I knew there would be more people. Oh, there's an alpha man. <sighs> right, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do we want? 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 I don't know. We need. We need. We need. We need. We need. Oh, she's already done our mark of death. You beat me to it, Dora. You beat me to it. Yeah, I'm a bit lost without Morgan sexes. Uh, do a uh, crushing prison. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I am using grenades, French. Stop shouting at me. I think when I use them, you actually shout at me more. <laughs> uh, nothing's ever going to be good enough for him, you know. He's just no pleasing some people. Uh, right, there it goes. There we go. And does that Ford Master have a uh, have something of uh, so. Kalen's on him? Where is he? He's over here somewhere, isn't he? Maybe. Where was he? Where was he when we killed him? Oh, I'm so confused. Maybe he didn't have anything on him. I thought he had like more of um, Kalen's stuff on him. Now I've lost him. I love all of like the bodies that are just like glowing white because they've frozen. <laughs> uh, Darkspawn Forge. We click on that. Uh, it looks like we should be able to, but apparently. Ooh, 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 there's a tiny bait. There we go. Darkspawn have fastened crude spikes and corrupted uh, something, something. Yeah, I don't know what that's it. <laughs> Wind's head was in the way. Uh, okay, so. You. We need Dora's lockpicking skills. Now's better than later. <laughs> uh, go and loot the mage's chest again. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh, we need a key. It's not gonna be this key though. It's not the key we need for like the uh, the king's thing, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, we need another key. Uh, would I rather not be able to pause or not be able to tab? Um, I'd rather not be able to tab as much as that would be annoying and would make certain things impossible. But like, I mean, I completed like my first sort of three playthroughs without realizing that the tab button did anything. So, you know, you can play the game without that, but not being able to pause, I would, I would hmm, be tearing my hair out pretty sharpish. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it would be really, really, really hard if you couldn't pause. Uh, where would that key be then for that chest over there? It must be on someone, surely. Did the Forge Master really not have anything on him? I'm very confused. I'm very confused. Um, did I just miss a chest in the area near the ramp? Which ramp? Which one, Fred? Which ramp? That ramp. That ramp. I mean, there's a chest I can't open. The Major's one. Uh, I don't think I've missed a chest, apart from the one I can't open. Uh, there's Duncan's fire. This is where we, f we met the doggy. This is where we first met doggy. This is where we were. Where our story began, I can hear I can hear bloody shrieks are about to come in, aren't they? Or rogues or something. Something's about to come in. Something's about to come in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak a save in before they appear. And there they are. Rogues. Uh, yeah. I remember this bit being a bit horrible because don't like a load of other people charging as well. Or am I misremembering? I am clearly misremembering. There's dead Mabari guys! Oh. But they've got stuff on them. This is a nasty one. Uh, I. Right, this bothers me. How did I manage to take war paint off a dead dog's corpse? How is that a thing? <laughs> what did I do <laughs> to take the war paint off so that I could then put it on my dog? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> um. Ah, now this is what I'm thinking of, isn't it? It's the Blight Wolves, yeah, because they're not allowed to dogs spawn running as well. It is really awful because they're quite difficult. Right, you know what we could do with? We could do with... Nope, that's the wrong thing. We could do with... Nice fireball. But you caught yourself in. Well done. Um, uh, okay, we've got our own doggy who can do a... Red Howl and win. Take a health pot. There's lots of Um, yeah, and then we've got people over there. Do you know what? Alistair. No, it's not Alistair. Who's gone over there then? Is it me? Have I gone over there? Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Oh, she be over here dealing with the dogs. Maybe she can distract them. Do you know what? I'm gonna let Dora distract them. Why not? Dora's tough. She can handle it. Um, and we'll take out these wolves. There we go. Doggy managed to uh, stun them all. Moon can do a bit of a group heal. Dora's doing fine. Like, she's not getting injured at all. She's taken on three of them by herself, and she's just fine. <laughs> Look, they're not even managing to hit her. That's because her dexterity's really hard. That's why that is. Um, uh, meanwhile, Win and Alistair are just flipping dying. Uh, we do a bit of a flame blast. And mind blast, that would be a that would be a good one, wouldn't it? Uh, I'm gonna ask to take a health potion. And let Wind take a health potion. Uh, yeah, this is embarrassing. Dora's just taken on three people by herself and like just like nothing. Like I haven't even had to heal her up like once and then we can't even handle three little wolves. <laughs> one of them's a yellow named one as well. <laughs> Dora's quite tough at this point, isn't she? Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh. Okay. So, oh, I've got Zephyrin's earring. Oh. Um. <laughs> which I can't wear. Um. It's got 
Kaelin's shield on it. Where is everybody, says Fred? I don't know, Fred. They've abandoned us. They, they just, they don't care. They're not, they just, you know, they don't care anymore. <laughs> They're just like, you know what? I'm sick of these live streams. Yeah, that's what you that's, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's all right, because I've got my, you know, got my dependables, you know, the two, the two most important ones. Yeah. My two favourites. Don't tell the others, but you're my two favourites. Um... <laughs> Um, I'm still I'm still annoyed about where the fuck that Forge Master went because he would have had some of Kaelin's stuff on him, right? Or am I just imagining that? I don't know. I don't know. Right. Okay, so that's Duncan's fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a pile of sacks over here. I don't want to miss this pile of sacks. There might be important stuff in that pile of sacks. You can get off my back. Ah, and we can then head up this way. Can we get around to Duncan's fire from this side? Well, there's enemies in this direction, so probably, yeah, and there's Caitlin's chest. But there's stuff up here, man. Stuff up the hill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, see, there's a wooden crate up here with an engraved silver bowl in it. We wouldn't want to miss that, would we? And a silver chalice to go with it. Hmm. Yeah. Matching set, man. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Go and click on Duncan's fire and get a sort of slightly cringy cutscene. Uh, we're going to get attacked first? No. Let's, let's, let's go and just click on Duncan's fire. There we go. Come on, have done their best to defile the bonfire where Duncan kept his nightly watch. Perhaps they uh, still sense something of the man's power. Is there not a cutscene? I'm sure there's a cutscene. Oh, or is it when you find the body that there's a cutscene? Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Right. Um, Chalen's chest. Uh, Chalen's <laughs> chest. Over here. Go. We'll open up this. Marek's blade. Secret correspondence. So it's true. He had convinced the forces of Orlay to ally against the Darkspawn. Empress Selene was merely awaiting his response. A response that never came. Now never will, thanks to Logain's treachery. Never is a long time, Alistair. Give it time, and let cooler heads prevail. There will be peace between us yet. Well, I hope you live to see it, Will. And I hope the Darkspawn don't. I mean, Freldon and um, Orle are already at peace, aren't they? I mean, I know they don't like each other, but they're not at war. So, you know, that's, that's peace. If you're not at war, you're at peace, right? <laughs> um, uh, you know, take what you can get. Uh, you can actually read those letters in the codex that um, Celine and uh, what's his name sent to each other, Kaelin. But right at this moment, I can't be honest. <laughs> right, so Dark Spawn, kill them all! Shouts Dorabella. Well, I could not have said it better myself, love. Uh, I'm probably quit my red blade on there. I was We'll do that in a second. It won't have any enchantments on it, that's the problem. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let that, that lot deal with those two, because I've got looting to do. No multitask. Uh, <laughs> oh, look, he's being chased by the doggy. That was kind of adorable. Running away from the doggy. Um, hmm. Logain hates Ole so much she takes the letters as proof that the Queen was trying to seduce Caelan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> Especially if you have Wynne in the party with you as well, because she completely tells him off for it. No, She's just kind of like, are you for real? <laughs> uh, right, let's have a look at Marek's blade then. Health regeneration in combat. Uh, weakens ne oh, weakens nearby dog spawn. I thought, it said, I thought it said weakens near dog spawn. Like, what? The blade weakens near dog spawn? Uh, stamina regeneration and six damage versus dog spawn. Although, with all of his enchantments, I think the one he's got on at the minute is actually better. But if we enchant Norik's blade, that'll be better for him in the long run. And then we've got Kaelin's shield. Yeah, the one he's got on is better. Uh, and something else I was going to do. Oh, I was going to kick the dog out. 
That's right, because the doggy has got uh, cold resistance and four attack versus two armor penetration and eight armor. Ooh. And then... Oh, two dexterity and two damage is definitely better. Uh, that one I'm not so sure about. I think he's better with the one he's got, to be fair. Um, in the chat, don't mind me, all two of you. Can't believe they've abandoned us, guys. Can't believe they've abandoned us. Maybe they're off in their own little live stream somewhere. Maybe they're off. I see a trap. You know. Whoa! I just walked through that trap that Dora just warned me about. <laughs> Is that one that I can't disarm? I think that's one that I can't disarm. Yeah, there we go. Everybody fell over. <laughs> I was distracted. Um, right, so. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, Saturdays are weird though. Like, not as many people seem to turn up on Saturday. Which is odd, because you would think, like, you know, people aren't at work and stuff. Although I suppose people do stuff on Saturdays, don't they? Not everybody's like me, whereas, like, if you're not at work, you're at home. That's me. If I'm not at work, I'm at home. <laughs> Other people have, like, you know, social lives and hobbies that actually take them outside of the house and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> not me! <laughs> uh, right, okay, so... Punch this guy in the face. Uh... Why is everybody running away? I was thinking like, are there people behind us? Because they're both just like running in the opposite direction. Um, but there's not people behind us. Uh, take these guys out. You know what? I'm going to do a little bit of a fireball since they're out there on their own. Uh, yeah. Take care of that nice and easy. I was going to say something and I can't remember what it was. It's not the most annoying thing in the world when you're going to say something and then it just disappears from your head and you're just like, I have no idea what that thing that I was about to say was going to be. Not a clue. What was I going to say, guys? It was there. It was there in my head. And now it's not. And we may never know what it was. <laughs> Got no idea. What was I going to say? Like, just, just what was I going to say? Oh, there's Caelan over there. Oh. Um... Yeah, not a clue. What was I going to say, guys? Come on, remind me what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I remember what I was going to say. Um, we will, we are going to, at some point, soonish, um, have a third live stream every week on a Thursday where I'm going to do the Oblivion series. And we're going to finish off the Oblivion series as a live stream every week. Yeah, so you're going to have three live streams every week. I don't expect you to watch all of them if you don't want to. All right, all right. Understand that's a big commitment, but yeah, there's gonna be a gonna be a, a, a special extra one on a Thursday, probably after the Alice series is completed. I'll start doing that. I don't think the Alice series is actually gonna be done for Halloween, you know. <laughs> Although I'm gone canny now, like I'm doing pretty well, but I still don't think it's gonna be finished for Halloween. Might might overrun a bit. But that's all right, in it. Um, I did think because because uh, Halloween is on a Tuesday, so I'll be live streaming on Halloween and I thought maybe I could actually finish Alice off in a live stream but then I thought nah I don't know because it, it's definitely not getting as many views as the uh, Dragon Age stuff does so I don't know whether it would just be a bit of a waste of a live stream um I, I kind of want to get the Dragon Age I want to you know I want to keep Dragon Age going I don't want to you know stall it you know what I mean um uh uh, sorry, read the chat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. If we get our hands on the first Alice game, I mean, it's abandonware now, isn't it? The first Alice game, so I'd have to, I'd be able to download it from somewhere. It's just whether it would work on the computer or not is the question. Uh, I've got a few things through abandonware, like Elite Force is one of them, and. No One Lives Forever. Although, I tried to install No One Lives Forever on this computer. Because I had it installed on my old computer. And I went to the same website and everything and tried to install it on this computer a while back. And I just could not get it to work. Because I would love to do a playthrough of that on here. Wait, No One Lives Forever 2 more than the first one. Just because the first one's a bit too long, I think. It's a bit convoluted. They're great games, though, the No One Lives Forever series. I adore them. Some of my favourite games ever. They're just, like, 
very witty. Don't take themselves too seriously. Right, okay. Going across the bridge. That, do shrieks attack you on this bridge? Is that a thing I remember? Um, uh, I have a feeling that shrieks attack you on this bridge. Maybe? Oh. Sorry, Dora does not do sad face very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, then we've got he's the uh, necromancer guy, isn't he? Oh yes, eye patch skeletons, mm -hmm, lovely. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that sad face cracked me up there. Uh, ah yes, they're coming from both sides. That's what I was remembering. The fact they're coming from both sides. Um, okay, skeletal mage. We'll take him out first, shall we? Always want to deal with the mages. I think I was thinking of that bridge in the deep roads where the shrieks are talking. Uh, dee 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 dee. Uh, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Crushing prison. Uh, do that. There we go. We can just hit him with everything that we have got. Uh, and there he goes. Okay, and then we need to take care of this tit because he's going to cut and wind down dead easy, isn't she? Eight. I don't know, it might be a she, might be a she. <laughs> How can you tell once they're skeletal? <laughs> Not at a distance, anyway. <laughs> Do a mind blast. There we go. How uh, do you mind blast a skeleton? Surely it doesn't have a mind. Like, do you have to have a brain to have a mind? I assume you would have to have a brain to have a mind. And if you're a skeleton, you don't have a brain because you're a skeleton. So how do you mind blast it? Yeah. Mm, these are the things that, you know, the, <laughs> the real questions people should be asking. Um, Wayne, take a health call, this. Um, and then go and hide behind your, you know, much bigger, scarier friends who can protect you from all the bad things. Because uh, they're kind of all coming for you right at the moment. Uh, we can get the hound to do a dread howl. Uh, and then if I come off Wynn, hopefully they should stop attacking her. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't think there's anybody else who's too scary. There's no one leeches or anything as they Alright. Okay. <laughs> uh, men and women do have differences in their bones. Yeah, I know, but if one's like running at you, you're not gonna go, you know, you're not gonna be counting the ribs or anything, are you? <laughs> um, right, okay, we'll go and loot all of these people. And then we'll go in there, uh, you know. Do whatever it is we're doing. Hunting down the necromancer guy. Although, to be fair, like, we've got the chest, haven't we? Like, at this point, we've found the key, we've found the chest, we've found the stuff in the chest. Like, you know, technically speaking, we've done what we came here to do. Uh... Oh, this, I remember this would be a bit shitty. Like, they all run at you, don't they? I'm going an hour, guys, and it's just the three of us. Like, how it? See, I mean, even Beyonce haven't turned up. It's terrible. <laughs> I mean, I know she's probably a busy woman, but you know, they, I expect that to make time. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, uh, oh, we've got traps, 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 we've got traps. Okay, okay, okay. Try not to get stuck in the traps, guys. Try not to do that. Um, I deliberately just fighting over the top of these traps. No, 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 no. Do the trap, love. The trap. There we go. Uh, Uh, what am I even being hit by? I don't know. I'm not really paying attention. I'm too busy thinking about my Beyonce joke. Um, <laughs> uh, right, okay. Uh, uh, no, Fred isn't Beyonce. Fred is um, Emily Blunt. Welsh friend is Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> Who would you like to be? Would you like to be somebody? Would you like to be uh, uh, a celebrity? <laughs> Because you can have a, a celebrity, uh, you know, alias if you want. You just pretend that loads of celebrities want to be five streets. Uh, you know, Angelina Jolie or something like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, whoever you fancy. Brad Pitt. Uh, do you know what? I would not know Brad Pitt if I tripped over him. He's one of those people where, like, I know the name, but I have literally no idea what he looks like. I don't even know if I've seen any movies with him in. I'm not, I'm not that clued up on like sort of big Hollywood stars because I don't really watch that many movies. Like I watch Disney movies and I watch, um, who did I just tell her to heal then? Heal yourself, Win. I can't remember who I told you to heal. Um, yeah, I watch Disney movies and I watch Marvel movies and Star Wars movies. And if they haven't been in any three of them, I probably don't know who they are. <laughs> you know, unless they've been in something else geeky or sci-fi-ish. But like, even like, you know, most like, sort of like, uh, she keeps getting hit by the fucking thing. Um, uh, we're right in its path, that's the problem. Um, yeah, but like, like if a, like a big, you know, Sake. Who's probably in a crushing prison? There must be a mage somewhere. Uh, um, this fight is not going well, is it? It's because I'm too busy talking about actors. Uh, <laughs> um, Louis the Fourteenth. You want to be Louis the Fourteenth? <laughs> Do you know what common misconception you could be Louis the Fourteenth? This is just going to confuse me because now everybody's got like two nicknames. Oh man. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, like, uh, what was I saying? I was saying I like sci-fi, wasn't I? But then, like, if like a big sci-fi movie comes out, I'm probably not going to watch it. You know what I mean? Like Avatar. Oh God, Avatar is not for me. You know, like it's just. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I didn't enjoy Avatar. And then like the second one came out, and my mate was like, "Oh, do you want to come and see Avatar with me?" And I was like, "Oh, all right, go on then. Maybe it's better than the first one." It was not better than the first one. Biggest pile of shit I've ever watched in my life. Anyway, <laughs> pretty, but still shit. <laughs> pretty shit, still shit, innit? Um, uh, right, what am I doing? 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 Alistair's been paralyzed. None of this is going well, is it? Right, okay, we need to attack that guy. We need to attack the big guy. Um, uh, <laughs> Reading the chat, don't mind me. Kitties have been quiet. Yeah, they're sulking because I'm not letting them out. There's just too much neighbourhood drama going on. I just can't, I can't deal with it. Uh, there's too much fighting and yelling and screaming. and. Uh, I mean, it's quiet at the minute, but it wasn't last night. And I let them out for like an hour because it was like... I haven't let them out well, most of the week because it's been rainy. It's been like, you know, storms and stuff and pissing it down. So I haven't been letting them out. Um... And then yesterday I came home from work and it was dry and lovely. I thought, oh, I'm going to let them out. And they were out for like an hour and they were really happy. And then it all started kicking off. People fucking screaming at each other and slamming doors. And I just like, fuck's sake. So I had to get them in. Because I'm not having them out there in the most of all that shit. Uh, and it had been really quiet all week as well. Um, anyway, it's not like this all the time though. It's just you know, stuff that's going on at the minute. It's sort of one person ruins it for everybody else kind of situation we've got going on in my street at the minute. And it's just like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> get rid of that one person and it will be fine. Which we will eventually. The police are trying to get him evicted. So, you know, we'll definitely get rid of him <laughs> one way or another. Anyway, anyway, talk about happy things. Right. Um, um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Right, we got the big guy down, didn't we? Did we get the big guy down? We've got the big guy down. 
put on looting. There we go, we had Caleb's gold nuts on him. Uh, uh, now we're talking about movies. <laughs> yeah, but like, like, you know when a big movie comes out, I, I don't very rarely bother watching big movies when they come out. I just like, you know, I like the geeky stuff, I like the, the Disney stuff and the Star Wars and that kind of stuff. And I want to say Marvel, but I'm kind of going off Marvel. I think they're getting a bit... They're outgrowing themselves, aren't they? Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit much these days. It's sort of like I've kind of lost track. Um, I see a trap. Yeah, I see all a right, trap right. too, Dora. Although I'm quite looking forward to uh, Marvel's coming out. Quite looking forward to that, because I liked um, Captain Marvel. It's one of my favourites. Uh, I also liked Eternals, which everybody else hated, but I kind of loved that film. I thought that was really good. I don't really understand why everybody hated it so much. I really like that film. Pretty good. Um, good cast, man. That, that had good people in it. It had, uh, what's her name? From Humans. I can't remember what she's called. But she was in Humans. Oh, God, I loved Humans. Oh, ended on a cliffhanger. Although I think it was kind of an alright cliffhanger because I got the feeling it was about to... Uh... How many seasons did it get? Three. I think if it had got a fourth one. I think it was about to kind of... Um, go a little bit weird <laughs> I think it had gone really well and then I think like the just the storylines that they were setting up I think it was just going to tip it into a uh, kind of like you know weird weird land maybe ending it on a cliffhanger was actually better plus they killed off like the best character at the end of season three you know. so I didn't really want to go forward without her to be honest anyway um uh I was mumbling incomprehensibly for a while. Was I? You should be used to that, Fred. <laughs> uh, you like the last Doctor Strange one? I haven't watched that one yet. Uh, I have watched One Division. I loved One Division. One Division was great. That was like um, one of the. I think a lot of the uh, sort of TV series that they did have been a bit. If not, I mean, maybe not shit, but like lackluster. Do you know what I mean? But One Division was actually really good. That was that was really good. I enjoyed that one. I like Ms. Marvel as well. That one was quite fun. It was quite sort of cute. I quite like that one. But it wasn't sort of like like One Division was genuinely good storytelling, whereas most of them aren't. You know what I mean? But you don't really expect good storytelling from Marvel, do you? That's not really what you kind of watch it for. <laughs> um. But when um, Secret Invasion came out and everybody was like, oh, the story doesn't make any sense, the story's not very good, the script writing isn't very good. It's like, it's Marvel, what do you expect? It's not fucking Shakespeare, love Jesus. <laughs> we don't watch it for the storyline, we watch it for the, uh, you know, all of the action scenes and the fighting and the, the the stupidness of it. Like, it's not something that you go into expecting this sort of work of genius or anything. Uh, <laughs> right, where are we going? What are we doing? Uh, I don't know. Where are we going? Let's go and loot these wooden crates if we can. Uh, oh, this is leading us out. That's leading us to the world map. That's not where we want to go. Uh, we need to chase down the uh, the necromancer guy, man. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we want to go like up here, I think, do we? Well, there's there's bad guys up there according to the map, so it's probably where we want to go. That's the bridge that we've just been to. So, uh, <laughs> I'm reading the chat on my me. I haven't watched Loki yet either. Loki's meant to be good. I watched it. Right, okay, there's an emissary. Take out the emissary. I mean, Loki got a second uh, season, which, uh, you know, it's a rarity these days. <laughs> you remember when every show used to get like six seasons minimum? Now, <laughs> most of them are lucky if they get like, you know, two. Um, yeah, we'll take out that emissary. Uh, there we go. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of episodes in seasons has drastically gone down these days as well, hasn't it? I used to get like 20 episodes in a season of something. Well, American shows. Not so much over here. Over here you've all got like six or eight episodes in a season. That's kind of always been a thing. But like, you know, like yeah, American shows you always used to get like 20 odd episodes in every season. Which was always like the, the fun thing about American TV shows. They used to have these massive long seasons. And it was like, like oh my god. Because that was just not a thing over here. You would always just get like six or eight episodes in something. But now even even the uh, even the US ones seem to be kind of short. Uh, right, so uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. Mm -hmm. even Doctor Who, even Doctor Who what? Common misconception. <laughs> even Doctor Who what? Uh, I'm trying to think what I've just said. What what was it? What have I just said? <laughs> What have I just said? Sometimes you'll comment on something that I've just said and I'm like, I can't actually remember what I've just said. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> so. Uh, right. Uh, dee -dee -dee. <laughs> uh, um, we're over an hour in and we're still the only three here. Unless there's some lurkers, which there might be. Sometimes is. Um... Uh, I need, 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 fireball. Does Doctor Who also have very few episodes per season? Um, how many episodes does Doctor Who usually have? Usually like 12 to, 12 to 16-ish maybe? Although the, the last season with Jodie didn't have many. I think it had about six, but that was because of COVID. So yeah, Doctor Who has longer ones. Um, I'm still in denial about Jodie leaving, you know, because she's actually my favourite Doctor. I've never had a favourite Doctor before because I just love all the Doctors. I love every Doctor. I love every era. I love, you know, every companion. I just kind of love all of it. You know, all of the ways it reinvents itself. I always love it. I've never had a favourite Doctor. I've never had, like, my Doctor. Because the Doctor, like, when when I first started watching Doctor Who was when it came back and it was Christopher Eccleston, right? And then it was David Tennant. But I was never, like, really into it. Like, I used to watch it, but I wasn't really into it. It wasn't until Matt Smith that I got, like, really into it and became, like, a massive Doctor Who fan. But it was during watching Matt Smith's first season that I started watching the classic Who. Because there was a clip of it there was a clip from uh, Earthshock that popped up on the Doctor Who website and I watched that and thought oh that looks kind of cool and so then I went to watch Earthshock which then led me to watching all of Peter Davison and then I watched all of Colin Baker and then I went back and watched Tom Baker and then I got into the big Finnish audio dramas and I mean a lot of like the Doctors and the Companions I first encountered in the big Finnish audio dramas before I ever saw the episodes with them and stuff like that. So like I kind of just sort of discovered Doctor Who all at once like that. So I never really had like a My Doctor, you know, like people do. Like, the one they watched when they were a kid. Because the one that I've watched when I was, you know, a kid, I, was, I wasn't that into it at the time. Although I actually haven't gone back and rewatched them. Chris Freckleston was a bloody brilliant Doctor, you know, he really was. Um, I wasn't actually that much of a fan of David Tennant, to be honest, as the Doctor. Yeah, out of all of them, he's probably one of he's probably quite low ranking for me, which I know is not something a lot of people would agree with. But you know, I'm not that excited about Russell T Davis coming back as the head writer either. I'm just sort of like, really? I don't think his era was that great, to be honest. <laughs> not for me, anyway. I was I was much a bigger fan of the Stephen Moffat era. But yeah, but then when Jodie came along, I don't know, I, there's something about her. I'm just like, sh 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 like I think I've, I've found my doctor. I think this is it. I think <laughs> Jodie is my doctor and now she's gone and I'm just sort of like, oh, oh. Um, I don't think she had the best episodes to work with a lot of the time. She did further in. Like our, our first two series, not so much. Seasons, whatever. Not, not so much. Um, although I'm not, I'm not like a hater like a lot of people are. A lot of people really hated Jodie's first two seasons. But then when she had, uh, what was it called, Flux? I think it's called something like that. That was great. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel like she didn't quite, she wasn't allowed to reach her full potential. I think. 
which is annoying. But um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in denial about it. Like we've got the 60th anniversary coming up where they're having 60th anniversary specials where they're bringing back David Tennant. And I'm sort of like, and they're bringing Donna back though. I did like Donna. She's she's one of my top three companions. My top three Doctor Who companions of all time are Donna, Leela from the classic series, and then Benny from um, the books. She's in the books and she's in the audio dramas, but she's never been on the... Uh, she's never actually been on telly, but uh, she's great. Benice Summerfield, I love her. They're my top three favourite companions of all time. So I am kind of excited Donna's coming back, but at the same time, I'm just sort of like, David Tennant's not my favourite Doctor at all. And Russell T. Davis is not my favourite writer at all, and Jodie's not there anymore, and I'm just kind of like, I don't, I don't know if I'm even going to watch it. <laughs> I mean, I'll watch them eventually, obviously, but I don't know if I'm going to get swept up with the hype and actually, like, you know, watch them at the time. I might, I might, <laughs> I might just go back and rewatch all of Jodie's episodes because <laughs> I just honestly, I feel like I'm in denial or something. Um, um, uh, uh, hmm, 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 uh. Sorry, I'm reading the chat. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say I don't like David Tennant. He's just not my favourite. He's just... He's a, he was too emotional, man. He was too whingy. He was always crying in every freaking episode. It's just like, for God's sake, I'm sick of it, man. <laughs> whining about everything and just like <laughs> everything was such a big deal and it was like for god's sake man pull yourself together jesus <laughs> uh right okay i can hear shrieks i can hear shrieks there we go i knew you were gonna appear uh. <laughs> uh, Magpie's live streams are at least twenty five percent of her saying I'm reading the chat. Yeah, that should be another one of our drinking games, shouldn't it? You drink every time I say I'm reading the chat. Reading the chat, guys. Reading the chat. Uh, right. Okay. So there he is, Mr. Necromancer face. Okay, <laughs> we've been here before, haven't we? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, these are the grunts that go down in like one swing, but there's like 50 million of them. I love fighting these guys because it feels like, you know, you're actually like a proper badass just cutting through enemies. Uh, and then there's an ogre, because why wouldn't there be an ogre? Um, let's take all of these guys down one at a time. And then we'll take the ogre down. Um, you know what we need? Oh, win! Get away from the ogre. Uh, we need, we need, we need, we need, we need a fireball. We need them more clustered together. Oh, that fireball's definitely going to get all of us. <laughs> it was a misjudged fireball. That was. Oh, win's going to die. Don't die, win. Don't die. Quickly, 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 quickly. There we go, Jesus. Um, oh, for fuck's sake! Why are you coming after her? Like, there's much bigger, scarier people that you could go after. Um. Do you not have like a threaten or something like that? Or am I not giving it to him? I probably haven't given it to him. <laughs> probably haven't given it to him. Try overpower. And then Dora. Dora's taking out the grunts. Okay, we'll let Dora take out the grunts. Uh, uh, dee -dee. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I was reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, wind's in a wall, which is unfortunate. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Get the doggy over here and make him do a dread howl. I just want to incapacitate the ogre a bit before he kill. He's going to kill Wynn, isn't he? He's going to kill Wynn. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. She's alive. She's alive, guys. She's alive. Uh, and do a bit of a group heal just to you know, keep everybody on their feet. There we go. Blimey, Wynn. That was... 
That was that was a close one. That was. Uh, she does have a spirit watching over her, doesn't she? There's a grunt over there. Um, there's more through there, but they're hidden behind a wall. Right. Okay. I tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna loot everybody. Then I'm gonna take a quick break because I need another cup of tea. Because I've still got cake to eat and I can't eat my cake without a cup of tea. That's just, it's just not on. It's kind of be doing with it, man. Can't eat cake without tea. What, what sort of crazy world would we be living in? <laughs> um, um, uh, I'll go and loot this pile of filth. Okay, right. So, I'm going to take a very quick break and I shall be back. Talk amongst yourselves. Maybe when I get back, Beyonce will have turned up. <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on. I forgot my cup. I forgot my cup. I always do that, don't I? Go make a cup of tea and I forget my cup. Okay, I am back. <clears throat> I am back with tea. Um. <laughs> oh, are you being served? Are you being served? It's friggin' brilliant. I love are you being served. <laughs> Although I think it's... I don't know how well it's aged. Um, I think some of the jokes 
you, you, you kind of go a bit, mm. uh, but yeah, I love how you've been served. Fortunately, the entire cast is now dead, which is a bit sad when you're watching it. Everybody on it is now dead. Uh, but are you being served? Dad's army and a low, a low. Or like, because they were all written by the same people. They're all really, but I love a low, a low. A low, a low, honestly, God. That, it's one of those ones that can make me laugh out loud even when I've watched it like 28 times. I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid. Love a low, a low. Um, <laughs> love it so much. I think actually the pilot episode is one of the best episodes. <laughs> um... Yeah, which which is good because it's like the pilot, you know, the pilot episode is your your introduction to it. It's just, oh, I just oh God, I love it. I think it's genius. It's genius. It's actually a spoof of a series called Secret Army, um, which was about the French Resistance, and <laughs> I mean it was a very serious show because it was about the French Resistance, and you know it was a very serious thing when they, you know France was occupied by the Nazis and. You know, they were trying to get the uh, the British airmen that were shot down. They were trying to save them from being um, taken as prisoners and they were trying to send them back so that they could, you know, then be sent back up in the, you know, planes and whatnot. And, you know, they had, like, cyanide pills sewn into the seam of their coats and things like that in case they got captured and stuff. I mean, it was, it was a serious thing, so, you know, it was a serious show. But when you watch it... <laughs> You can totally tell why somebody watched it and thought I need to make a spoof of this because the tone of it is so weird. It's like, it's almost like it takes itself too seriously to the point where it's kind of laughable. And it, it I don't know, it's really weird watching it, but like, like to give you an idea, in the very first episode, <laughs> there's this British airman, but he's injured. He's got like a broken leg or something, so they can't get him back home. And they're worried about him being captured because he knows too much about the French resistance, about, like, you know, who the contacts are and who the people are. And they can't risk him being captured and revealing any of that information. So they kill him. They just murder him. <laughs> right? Which, you know, like, fair enough. It probably is the kind of thing that they would have had to do. Stuff like that. But, I don't know, just, there's something about it. There's something, they get the tone of it just a bit wrong. And when it happens, you just sort of, like, find yourself laughing. Because, it, I don't know, it, it, it's weird. It, you'd have to watch it to kind of understand. But, I, I like, when I, you, yeah, when I watched it, I was like, I totally understand how somebody could watch this and think I have to make a spoof of it. But then it got quite, when Hello Hello first came out, it got quite a lot of criticism because they were like, well, you, you've made a comedy about the French Resistance. You know, that's, like, a serious thing. <laughs> and you've made this daft comedy about it. Um... But honestly, it's just, it's genius, Hello, Hello, I love it. Um, uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, it's one of those ones that's just ingrained in my brain. I've got like lines from it that are just, <laughs> just in my head forever. <laughs> whole scenes, I can replay whole scenes in my head. Because <laughs> I just love it, I think it's, I think it's hilarious. Um... What other comedies do I like? Miranda. I love Miranda. Miranda's another one where I've got whole scenes of it in my head. Sometimes it just makes me laugh. There's a cat. Um, uh, what, Squeaky? I'm talking about TV shows. I think what other comedies I like. Me and Fred had a conversation about this on one of the test live streams that was private and it was just me and him before I started live streaming properly. And then afterwards I, I could think of loads of comedies and I thought I should have mentioned those. And <laughs> now I can't think about any of them. Uh, I like old comedies though. I don't I don't like many modern ones. There's something about comedies from like the sort of 60s, 70s type era. There's just something about them. Uh, Adam's Family. I love the Adam's Family, the original. I don't really like the films that they brought out in the 90s. I don't really like them. I love the original. I like uh, Bewitched. That's uh, one I really like. I'm trying to think, man. <laughs> There'll be loads. There'll be loads. Once, once the live stream's finished, I'll be like... Yeah. Can't think of any. There's the, there's the cat again. What? What's up, Squeaks? What? What? Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> She's sniffing the carpet. Okay, should we get on with Dragon Age then? Uh... <laughs> oh my goodness, what? 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 Do you want to come up here? Come on, come up here. No, she doesn't want to come up here. You know, last night she was driving me absolutely friggin' mental, meowing her head off just constantly over nothing. So I kept picking her up, like every time she was meowing, I thought I'll pick her up because she doesn't like being picked up. So I kept picking her up and then it got to the point where like every time I was going near her, she was running away from me. <laughs> what? What's the matter? You're too squeaky, aren't you? You're too squeaky. Come up here. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what's the matter? I'm busy. I've got, I've got a, I've got a live stream to do. There's two people watching this, man. It's a big deal. Two people in the world who are relying on me for entertainment. You know, it's a big responsibility. Can't kind of be doing with having a squeaky cat. Hey, don't don't put your paws on my keyboard, and don't drink my tea. Hmm. Oh dear. No getting rid of her now. <laughs> hey. You want scratches? Yeah. <laughs> oh well, this is us for the next 10 minutes, I think. <laughs> you want to carry on talking about comedies? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I can't do anything because she won't let me anywhere near the keyboard, so... Yeah, this is just us for a bit now. This really is a kitten break. <laughs> uh, yep. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the Good Life. That's a good one. That's a good comedy. I love The Good Life. And To the Man and Born. Very good. That's a good one too. Good Life's better though. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cat, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to move at some point. Uh, have you ever watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer? No, I haven't. It's one of those ones that kind of passed me by. I've just sort of never really, uh, never gone back to it. Uh, I probably will at some point. It's the kind of thing I'll watch at some point. Uh. Think of other comedies. Dinner Ladies. Dinner Ladies is good. Um. <laughs> um. Uh, Red Dwarf. He's like a bit of Red Dwarf. He used to watch that with my brother when I was little. And then BBC Two brought out like a, a sort of sci-fi comedy called Hyperdrive and it only got two seasons and it didn't get too much attention but it was really good and I think they're all on YouTube had Miranda Hart in it um, and that was like a massive spoof of all just like every sci-fi thing ever with Miranda Hart as like the first off it was it, it was good it was good Hyperdrive I loved Hyperdrive <laughs> <laughs> it's one, <laughs> there was one bit that I remember because it was just like taking the piss out of all the typical sci-fi stuff you know and uh, it was one where they're, they're having like first contact with this alien race <laughs> and, <laughs> and she's, she's sort of given like, given like the rundown of everything they know about this alien race and then she's like apparently the language that they speak is remarkably um, remarkably similar to English which I have to say is jolly useful <laughs> <laughs> it's taking the piss out of the fact that all aliens speak English. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hyperdrive was great. Oh my god! Is Welsh friend here? Hello, Welsh friend! Um, uh, do I rewatch my own videos? Sometimes. I don't, like, always do it. Um... Yeah, sometimes. I don't usually, like, sit down and watch them from beginning to end, though. I usually, like, you know, jump in at, at uh, 
bits that I think were quite good. <laughs> I do it with the live streams because obviously like I don't edit the live streams so I don't get to watch them back. But like if there was like a bit where I think, oh, I think that bit was quite good, I'll go back and watch it just to see if it really was quite good. Um, so yes, I sometimes rewatch my own videos. Um, like for the most part, I just kind of upload them and then forget about them. But, you know, sometimes I do. Uh, yeah, Welsh friend, there's a cat on my knee and we're just sort of like stuck here for a bit because she won't let me do anything. So, yeah, we're just talking about, um, we're just talking about TV series that we've enjoyed, you know, comedies in particular. Sitcoms and stuff, you know, it's what we're doing at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. This cat's just looking at me. I know, I know, I know you want attention and everything, but can you just like piss off a bit? <laughs> like I love you, but please go away. Hey. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just turned into like a podcast about TV series, isn't it? Um, anybody watching anything good at the minute? <laughs> kind of think what I've been watching recently, apart from me uh, Disney villain season. Is yeah, Jesus Christ! I had no idea what words I needed for that sentence, did I? My Disney villain films um, for Halloween. I mean, what else have I been watching? What else have I been watching? Netflix documentaries mainly. Yeah, I love a good Netflix documentary. So that's the kind of stuff stuff that I put on in the background when I'm doing other stuff. If you, you know, if you just sometimes want something in the background. And Netflix documentaries are weird because I find they either fall into two categories. They're either like really good and really gripping, or so boring you like can barely even stand to watch it. Those are like the two categories that Netflix documentaries fall into. Uh, oh, oh, the cat's moving. Uh, she's sitting on the heater. Are you gonna stay on the heater? Am I safe? Can I go back to my live stream? I think I can go back to my live stream. Uh... <laughs> oh my god, we're up to four viewers. Jesus Christ, everybody's piling in now. Right, I'm just gonna eat some cake. I've got Halloween cakes. I've got fiendish fancies, which are just French fancies, only with orange icing, but they're called fiendish fancies now. I'm gonna eat a fiendish fancy and drink some tea. Uh, then I'll get back to it, I promise. It's orange flavoured as well. Orange flavoured French fancies. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm classy, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Had a cat with me for 10 minutes and now I'm just eating cake. <laughs> I mean, what more can you want? What more can you possibly want? Okay. <clears throat> Get back to it, shall we? It's a shame that I was enjoying our chat about TV series. <laughs> right. Right. So, if we go back to the game... Up and unpause it because the cat paused it when she sat on my space buff <laughs> with our fat ass. Right, okay, so. Um, uh, vinegar crisps. Oh, I love, I love vinegar crisps. <sighs> I like every flavour of crisp, you know. I don't think there is a single flavour of crisp that I don't like. Although they're bringing out loads of weird ones at the minute, aren't they? Like pepperoni pizza. And yet pepperoni pizza flavoured Doritos. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, and cheeseburger. You like cheeseburger flavoured crisps. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, cheeseburger flavoured crisps? Best crisp flavour. Best crisp flavour in the world. Worcestershire sauce. Oh my god. Worcestershire sauce flavoured crisps are just the best thing on planet Earth. They're the best, aren't they? That and pickled onion. Those are my two favourites. Uh, anyway. Love some monster munch. Oh, man, Monster Munch. It's the best, in it? But also, actually, some one of my favourite crisps is knickknacks. But it has to be the spicy ones, not the uh, barbecue rib ones. Those ones are rank. But the uh, 
the, uh, the spicy ones. Oh, no. they're just the best thing. Wow, that's a lot of red suddenly on my map. Should we uh, stop talking about crisps and uh, concentrate? Uh, okay, I'll tell you what I need. I need win. I need you, win. I need you. Because win has a fireball. If we, uh... oh, we should definitely have set a trap up. We should have set a trap up. We should not have just run in there blindly like a bunch of idiots. Now she's going to have nowhere she can use a fireball without taking out half the flipping party. There we go. Uh, luckily, we're pretty immune to fire. Um, do a bit of a uh, group heal. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, uh, oh, Timothy's here as well. Hello, Timothy. Oh my god, we're up to six all of a sudden. Jesus, where have you all been? <laughs> we went for like an hour and a half with a nobody. Uh, sorry, everybody's talking about crisps now. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of barbecue crisps, to be honest. I don't like the barbecue hula hoops either, which is like most people's favourite. Most people are like, oh, barbecue hula hoops are the best hula hoops. I'm like, no. I'm not a big fan of barbecue sauce, though. I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a lover. Especially when they put it on things like pizza. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Why would you put barbecue sauce on pizza? Like, no, no. Pineapple on pizza? Yes. Barbecue sauce? No. <laughs> it's the kind of person I am. Um... Uh, we, uh, we're going to tice a few more people in. Oh my god, there's so many people in this room and like none of them followed us. There's also a bear because, you know, why wouldn't there be a bear? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, a lot of them just seem to completely lose interest. That's weird, isn't it? Uh, do it. Fireball. And everybody can come in and help me attack this bear. Put it in a crushing prison. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Dark spawn flavored crisps. Mm, lovely. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean that you're nobody, common misconception, or Louis the Fourteenth, or whoever you want to be. Uh... <laughs> um. Okay. Right. So. <sighs> Little Devil, that's a that's an awesome nickname, that. Nickname, username, whatever. That's definitely what I'm going to call you because I don't know how to pronounce your actual username. <laughs> this is why I give people nicknames. Because a lot of the time I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I give people nicknames instead. <laughs> that's why you all have nicknames. Um, and now some of you have multiple nicknames because, you know, you, you, you <laughs> I keep pretending you're celebrities. Right, okay. Uh, these are all grunts. These are all just grunts, aren't they? Should be easy enough to take down. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, oh, sorry, don't mind me. I'm running. Uh, there we go. My f uh, mate at work dressed up as a devil because we're allowed to dress up of, over like Halloween weekend. You you can like come in and. Halloween fancy dress and some people really go all out like with makeup and stuff and do like proper bizarre things and other people just like you know put on a Halloween t-shirt or something like that but you're, you're allowed to dress up and she came in as a devil uh, and I was like oh that's a cool outfit and she was like well I am in hell <laughs> I was like now now we love our job we love working in retail <laughs> And I'm always annoyed with myself every year because I never dress up and I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm always like, next year I'll be prepared and I'll have something ready and then like, I never do. So I'm just there in my uniform. Oh man. I can never decide what to dress up as. I would love to do like, go as like a Jedi or something like that. I'd turn up to work as like a Jedi with a lightsaber and everything. Darth Vader. Oh my God. Can you imagine working in the shop as Darth Vader? That would be the best thing because I'd have a helmet on so nobody would know it was me. 
just walking around as Darth Vader. Do you think I'd get stopped more or less by customers if I was dressed as Darth Vader? Like, would you ask Darth Vader where the eggs were? Is that a thing you would do? <laughs> or would you, would you think, hmm, I need to know where the eggs are? You'd see Darth Vader and be like, you know what, I'm gonna ask someone else. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh, maybe I'll do that next year. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I could show up as Dora. <laughs> I'm short enough, to be fair. I am a short ass. <laughs> That's in my head now, though. Down the hole and into the deep. I don't even want to imagine where that leads. Yeah, we're about to jump down a deep dark hole. There's a barricaded door that we can't get through. Oh, we can't go back up into the tower, guys. Oh, no, that's awful. Um, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Just wandering around the shop as Darth Vader. Hmm. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, you, you lot are cracking me up. <laughs> Although, I think Kylo Ren has a cool outfit. I mean, he's not as good of a character. He's a shit character, but he's got a cool outfit, right? That helmet's kind of awesome. Maybe I could go as him. The trouble is, I don't, he doesn't have quite the same presence, does he? Like, you, you would ask Kylo Ren where the eggs were, wouldn't you? I don't think you would ask Darth Vader where the eggs were. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, oh god, I do make myself giggle. Right, um, yes, okay. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, right, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, right, yes, focus, woman, focus. You're, you're up to like, oh, I was going to say you're up to seven viewers, but we'll come back down to six. Oh, man. Man. Uh, I mean, we might not have actually. That might just be YouTube throwing a fit because you never know. Probably Louis the Fourteenth Internet playing up again, isn't it? <laughs> uh, right. Uh, right. Okay. So I've got those giant spiders in here. I fucking hate giant spiders. They're just annoying because they can poison you and overwhelm you. I think got too much tricks up their sleeve. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Darth Magpie, can you check in the back? I hate it when people say, can you check in the back? It's like, it's like they think that you can just walk in the back and find anything. Like, do you know what the back of a shop looks like? Do you know what the warehouse actually looks like? Like, it's freaking chaos. I mean, stuff's vaguely sorted together. Like, all of the crisps will probably be vaguely in the same place. And, and you know, and they try and vaguely sort it into, like, what what is in what aisle and stuff like that. But, like, I mean, stuff is just put on pallets, which is, like, then wrapped in friggin' cling film. And then, like, sometimes they're literally unreachable without a forklift. And if there's and it's only night shift people actually use the forklifts. So if, you know, there's no night shift people in, which there won't be because it's during the day, like, you know, like, we're very, oh, it really annoys me when people are like, oh, is there any in the back? Well, it's like, even if there is, there's a good chance I won't be able to get to it, assuming I can even find it. Like, you know, you, you, we've got, like, we can scan the barcode that's on the label and it tells us, like, how many there is supposedly in the shop and whether they're on the shop floor or whether they're in the back. So you can... They might say that there's, like, 200 of something in the back. That doesn't mean I'll be able to get it. <laughs> it might be there. It doesn't mean I'll be able to, you know, go and get it for you. It might be fucking 10 feet off the ground. Or, like... Well, more than 10 feet off the ground. It might, it might be, like, buried behind, like, six pallets. I remember last year... This was terrible planning. The, um... There was a big pallet of the, you know, the tubs of celebrations... There was a massive pallet of them come in. <laughs> and they were put, like, at the back behind, like, rows of other pallets and you couldn't get to them. And they ended up being none on the shop floor. And we had, like, something like 300 of them. And there was none on the shop floor and we couldn't get to them because there were all these other pallets in front of them that had to be cleared first. So, yeah. <sighs> Do not think that shops are run efficiently in ways that you can, you know, in ways that actually make sense. Because <laughs> they're not. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that always annoys me. It's just like, oh, can you check in the back? It's like, well, yeah, maybe. It does, it, just because it's there, it doesn't mean I can get to it. Um, except some things, like bread and stuff like that. You can usually get to the bread and eggs and stuff. 
And like anything that's chilled, you can get. Although even then, sometimes you can't get into the chiller because it's too full. And like, you know, they have to... But people don't understand that, that stuff has to be taken out in a certain order. Because if something's at the back, you can't get to it until all of the other stuff has been taken out. Which is stupid, it makes no sense. But it's because there isn't enough space, you know. Anyway, I've, I've, yeah, anyway, enough about tangents about um, <laughs> work. <laughs> um, um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, sounds like a management issue, says Timothy. Isn't everything? <laughs> Isn't everything a management issue? Um, I had a woman today, like, oh my God. It's the Saturday before Halloween. The shop floor is packed, right? There, you cannot get moved. Stuff is flying off the shelves. They can't keep up with it. We're short-staffed because we're always short-staffed. Because if you're in a shop, trust me, they are short-staffed, right? They're, they're not going to hire enough stuff because they need to save wages, right? So wherever you, whatever shop you're in, they're going to be short-staffed because you just are. And this woman was like, she came up to me and she's like, is there nobody putting the potatoes out? Because that basket of potatoes is empty. And I was like... Are you blind, woman? Can you not see how busy the shop is? Of course they are putting stuff out. They just can't keep up. Like, for heaven's sake. <laughs> like, are you being serious? <laughs> um, anyway, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough of the rant. Let's go and, like, kill some spiders or something. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Uh, oh yes, you are right, little devil. You are right when you answer them that um, what they're looking for isn't there and they ask, can you double check? Like, no. Oh, when it's like something that you don't sell. I once had a woman, she asked for something. I can't even remember what it was. And I was like, no, we don't sell it. And she was like, can you go in the back and check? I was like, check for what? We don't sell it. There's <laughs> like, like, you know, yeah, but can you go in the back and check? Like, for what? We don't sell it, woman. <laughs> You're not listening to what I'm saying to you. <laughs> or when they ask you for something that either you don't have, it's either out of stock or you don't sell it, and you go, no, 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 we don't have it. And they just stand there and look at you. Like, they expect you to do something. It's like, what the fuck do you want me to do? Get in my car, drive to Little, and get some for you. Like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I think I've been in retail too long. I think I need out. Anyway. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, um, it's just bad at the minute because we're in like the we're in the Halloween run up, which will then go into the bonfire night run up. That'll then go into the Christmas run up. That'll go into the New Year run up, and just like you can't breathe until January. Um, I love January. January's great. The shop's dead in January. <laughs> Everybody's skint and nobody can afford to buy anything. It's wonderful. Um, anyway. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> right, okay. Uh... Uh, right, yes. <coughs> Fighting spiders, that's what we're doing. Not complaining about work. If not, I do actually, for the most part, quite enjoy my job. It's just customers, man. They just ruin everything, don't they? I don't know why we let them in, to be honest. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Burn these spiders down. Uh... any Mabari crunches for the Mabari, I've just realised. But hopefully Wynn should be able to keep him alive. He's got enough constitution, hasn't he? Uh, 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 <laughs> Everyone treats the warden like they work in retail, yeah. <laughs> Expect you to have the answer to everything. To know everything about everything. The things you get asked. Honestly. Will this light bulb fit my lamp? How the fuck am I supposed to <laughs> How many we sell uh, we sell worming tablets in the pet aisle, right? And this woman was like, How many worming tablets will my dog need? <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm not a vet. <laughs> Just expecting you to know everything about everything. <laughs> oh, I love them. I love them. They're lovely customers, aren't they? Wonderful. Uh, most of them are actually, most of them are fine. I don't actually mind when people ask, like, where the eggs are and stuff. I don't really. Or, like, when people, you know, want you to reach something down for them or, you know, some little old lady who can't get down on her knees and needs something from the bottom shelf. I don't mind stuff like that. I'm, I think I'm coming across as quite bitter and twisted, like I hate all customers. I really don't. It doesn't bother me that much for the most part. It's just, you know. 
It's just those odd few who are just kind of like idiots say stupid things. The thing that I, I don't get, right? This happens a lot, right? Like more than you would think <clears throat> is that someone will ask you where someone is and you say, oh, it's in aisle 22, right? So they, they go off and then they come back like five minutes later and go, oh, it's not, it's not in aisle 22, right? And you go, okay, okay, we'll have a look. And you go to aisle 22 and you point at the thing that they were asking for that is in aisle 22 and they go, oh, I didn't come down this far. Or I didn't look on that side. Like, <laughs> What did you do? Did you just like stick your head round the aisle and when you didn't immediately see it, you came back and got me? Like, well, <laughs> you can understand maybe one person saying that to you, but that happens like every week. I'm not joking. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, we've gone down to five viewers. I've scared everybody off with me retail runs. Um. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, right, okay, so um, I promise we'll just talk about Dragon Age from now on. Well, maybe not just Dragon Age. We won't talk about retail anymore. <laughs> Making promises I can't keep here. Right, okay, so do a bit of a uh, fireball. <laughs> um, uh, in the chat. It's, you know what? It's your lot's fault, you know, because I start on a tangent and then you all like join in with my tangent and I get sucked back into the tangent when I'm trying to get away from the tangent. So really, I'm blaming you lot. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it's you lot. <laughs> uh, we'll get that emissary down while I'm reading the chat. <clears throat> uh, Uh, over the last five years or so, people have got a lot more verbally aggressive. Yeah, I think people have got ruder, maybe. I feel like people are getting ruder in the shop. Just like more impatient. Uh, I remember one of the girls was saying the other day, she was like, it's since COVID people seem to have got ruder. I'm like, mm, I don't know, because I didn't work in it before COVID. I worked in retail like during COVID, but I didn't work in retail before COVID, so I don't really know. But. It does feel like, at the minute, just recently, like, you know, the last year or so, people have gotten ruder than what they were. Although, like I say, 90% of customers are fine, you know. I would go so far as to say lovely. Most of them are actually lovely, but, you know, you always get an arsehole, don't you? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm hiccuping. Uh, it's all the cake I've eaten. Right, okay, so... There's going to be spiders in here, isn't there? Uh, <laughs> um, you only watch this for the tangents, do you? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> is that my thing? Is that my draw? Is that why people watch me for the tangents? Anybody could do a, a gaming live stream. Anybody could do that. But only I <laughs> can take you on true tangents that go so far off what we're playing that, ever, that anybody new tuning in would be like, what the hell are they talking about? Uh... Let Wind do a little bit of a uh, flame blast on these spiders. And do a bit of a mind blast. There we go. I think you've always been, or player, they've always been that way, but the more people like that you experience, the more the impression deepens. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I, maybe I just don't have the tolerance for it anymore. I, I think I'm just, you know, I've been doing it long enough that I just like, <laughs> like what patience that I might have had is just gone. Um, yeah. I am kind of job hunting. <clears throat> Although I don't know if I want to leave, because I mean, you know what, I've actually got quite a cushy thing going because I'm on, I'm on good enough terms with the manager that I can work whatever shifts I want you know it's that kind of thing and I get on with everybody everybody there's great it's a really nice for me anyway it's a really nice kind of work environment there is a bit of drama goes on but as long as you stay out with that um so you know you get away with loads like <laughs> like I'm entitled to a half hour break I take about 45 minutes um you could just like go off and skive now and then like I mean honestly you get away with murder um, I don't know what I would have to do to actually get sucked, like, because people just don't. We're dying here quite rapidly. 
The only thing I've known people get sucked for is the test. That's about the only thing. Wings down, oh no. Uh, isn't that I hate spiders? They can web you, they can overwhelm you, they can poison you. Like, there's just, they've got too much in their arsenal, man. It's not fair. Um, but I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sort of like looking for something else to do on the side so that I can like reduce my hours a bit. Because 40 hours a week in a shop, man. Jesus, it's mind numbing. More than anything else, it's just boring, isn't it? It's just like the same thing over and over again. Eight hours a day, five days a week. It's like, Jesus. I feel like my brain cells are dying. I'm sure I was more intelligent before I started working in retail. <laughs> so I just, I don't know. I just want something a bit different. Maybe do like on the side. Go down to part-time hours. And then do something else part-time, you know. So I'm looking for, I'm not looking for like another job that would be, you know, a job. I'm just looking for something. I'm looking for, you know, I'm trying to look at stuff that's a bit different and interesting. <clears throat> Anyway, now that I've told you about, you know, my life plans, which I'm sure you all wanted to know about. Um, we survived the spiders, guys. Oh, my goodness. I feel like we need, a, you know, a badge or something. <laughs> little award, little ribbon to pin to our uh, pin to our armour. We survived the spiders. Um, you know what? I don't know. Dora's armour does absolutely nothing to protect, like, you know, her chest area. Where, like, you know, her heart is and stuff. Like, oh, your heart's kind of, like there is in it kind of you know so but still you would think that's a lot of exposed skin there yeah <laughs> um mm -hmm. uh i should go back and read through the chat excuse me a minute <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Never post anything that would get you punched on the nose in, in the playground, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's funny about when people, you know, those people on the internet who kind of like, you know, lecture people and... You know, just the kind of internet culture. It's always like, you never meet those people in real life, do you? Those people who are on the internet who know everything and who have to lecture everybody and judge everybody for every tiny little thing they do. You never meet them in real life. They don't exist in real life because you would never say that sort of stuff to people in real life. You just wouldn't do it, would you? And what I always think is ridiculous is when people like... People who are sort of like, you know, in their late 20s get sacked from jobs for things that they said on Twitter when they were like 14. Like... You know, especially when they're like people who are in the public eye, sort of, you know, actors and things like that. Like, like you know, usually soap actors, stuff like that. And quite often you'll hear them, they, oh, they got fired because of this tweet that was uncovered that, you know, from like 12 years ago or something, when they would have been a completely different person. I mean, I was an arsehole when I was a teenager. I know not everybody is, but when I was a teenager, I mean, some of the things that I used to think and believe and say, I mean, when I think about it now, I think, Jesus Christ, I had some funny ideas, I can tell you that much. It's a good thing I didn't have Twitter. <laughs> you know, you could do, you could probably dig up all sorts of uh, horrors. Luckily, I didn't really use social media when I was a teenager. But like, yeah, I always think that's insane. It's like, oh, you said this when you were fourteen. It's like <laughs> you're a different person when you're fourteen. Like, what are you talking about? Um, so that's yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> uh... <laughs> you never been punched on the nose, have you not? Uh... I've never been punched on the nose. I've been punched in the jaw once. I have punched someone in the nose. <laughs> I have done that. Um... Oh, look at the little raven. Are oh, you so cute? Oh, look at you. You adorable. Oh, there's a necromancer around here who wants to kill me, isn't there? There's also an undead ogre. Well, there's going to be. My tea's going cold, so I'm going to drink it a bit. Um, uh, what's Twitter? I don't know. <laughs> some ancient thing that's, you know, been lost to the ether, I think. I'm going to eat some more cake before we take on this ogre. I can't take on ogre without cake fueling me. We're up to eight viewers. Eight people have tuned in to hear me rant about Rachel and eat cake. They think that they've tuned in to watch Dragon Age, but oh, ho, 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 are they in for a surprise? <laughs> never, you never get what you expect. <laughs> it's like clickbait. 
I am, I'm actually a massive clickbaiter. You wouldn't think it. But I just like, you know, put on my titles. Oh yeah, it's Dragon Age. We're going to be doing Dragon Age. And then it's like, ah, actually, retail rants, therapy sessions. Mm, it all goes on here, man. All right. <laughs> what kind of tea? Jam and toast flavoured tea. Mm-hmm. So, uh, is it Yorkshire tea or is it te uh, um, Twinings? I can never remember. It's Yorkshire tea, isn't it? To a jam and toast flavoured tea. It's flipping beautiful. <clears throat> it's going cold as well. <clears throat> Two more viewers and Magpie has a panic attack, yeah. I'm, I'm totally cool until we hit double figures and then I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I need to neck this tea because it really is going cold and it's going to be undrinkable soon. I can't leave tea undrunk. Be with you in a second. And there's a cat. No, 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 no. We are not spending another 10 minutes with you on my lap and me not being able to do anything. Alright, we're already fighting the tangents in this live stream. God knows what we'll end up talking about. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, cannot even comprehend what a tea like that would taste like. It tastes like jam on toast. <laughs> Actually, it tastes like tea. It smells like jam on toast. It's weird. It just tastes like tea, but it smells like jam on toast. They do a biscuit one as well, and that just tastes like tea, but smells like biscuits. It's weird. But I stopped having sugar in my tea, you see to try and like reduce how much sugar I have. I mean, I, I realize that I'm, I'm drinking tea while eating cake, so you know, but, but I stopped having sugar in my tea and I just find that having that bit of, it's not like a really strong flavor, just like a little bit, like I say, it's more like a smell than an actual flavor. Just sort of, you know, makes it easier to drink without sugar. Right. Okay. Yep, here we go. Okay, does honey count? I don't know, isn't honey quite high in sugar? Maybe it's like natural sugar that's better for you, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of honey though. I will have honey in my tea, like if I've got a sore throat, but that's like the only time. I wouldn't drink it for, um, you know, pleasure. He's already lost a bit of his health, it's interesting. Risen ogre. Um, okay, so if Dora does her mark of death and Wayne does crushing prison, this is where I really start to miss um, Morrigan's uh, hexes, but it's all right. We don't need Morrigan. We're fine. We don't need a. Yeah, look at that. The yoga's going down quite quick. We've got a shambling corpse. Sorry, I've got hiccups. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's going down dead quick, man. He's also going to punch Win in the face, which is going to be bad. Um, do a mind blast, maybe. Yeah, we managed to stun him briefly. Briefly enough to make him go after someone else. Uh, and there we go. And uh, Dora got level up and Alistair's dying, which I didn't notice because I was reading the chat. See, it's you lot again. You, you just, you know, you just always do this. You just you distract me, get my party killed, encourage me to go off on tangents like a <laughs> um, Right. We'll deal with the rest of the right? Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh, sorry, Welsh friend just describing what she was like as a teenager. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I was a bit bitchy. I was a bit of a bully, actually, believe it or not. Which people never believe now when I say that, when I say I used to be a bit of a bully, but I really was. Um, I was quite horrible. In fact, yeah, I was downright horrible sometimes. Um, uh, I mean, I wasn't like, 
And I say I was a bit of a bully. I wasn't like the school bully, you know. I wasn't, you know, I didn't sort of make anybody's life a miser a miser a, 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 a misery. That's the word I was looking for. Um, or anything. I didn't like, you know, single people out and bully them or anything like that. It's just I was thoughtless with my words, mostly when talking to friends and things like that. And I did lie a lot as well. <laughs> I was a bit of a compulsive liar, in fact. Yeah. In fact, I had to train myself out of it. Because I lie, I honestly, I used to lie just about weird stuff, but to the point where it was almost like I believed what I was saying, do you know what I mean? And it's like I just did it subconsciously, and I had to train myself out of it. You know when people say, think before you speak? I had to actually do that consciously all the time. I had to kind of just go, do you know what? Is what you are about to say actually true or not? I had to be that strict with myself, because I, I realised that I was like, you know, hurting friends and things like that with the things that I was saying. And I had to completely, like, train myself out of being nasty. <laughs> um... Yeah, and, and there are there are times today when I still do it, where I'm still kind of like, I'm about to say something, and I'm like, hang on a minute there, is that actually true? <laughs> uh, but I'm, I think I'm now, for the most part, like, very, very truthful. I've kind of gone completely the opposite direction. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you, you do become a bit of a different person when you're a teenager. I think a teenager's weird, man. It's funny, me and my cousin were talking a while back, and we were talking about... When we think of what we were like, like, as a child, would everybody else like to go and attack this guy, please? No, that's the wrong thing. Boop. Yeah, it's like a child, like a sort of toddler. I sort of think of myself that I was basically the same as what I am now, only, you know, without as much life experience. Whereas as a teenager, it was like I became a completely different person for a while. It was like somebody else came in. I remember that as if it's like somebody else's memories. It's a whole weird period of your life when you're a teenager. It's just like, I mean, it's presumably hormones and stuff like that, but yeah, it's weird. When I, when I think back to like being a toddler, I still think that I'm kind of the same person as what I was then, only then I was, you know, a toddler. But like personality-wise, I was kind of the same person, whereas when I think of what I was like when I was a teenager, I was like, I do not recognise that person. Like, I, she's a completely different human, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, right. So... It's presumably just hormones. God, I'm so glad that that phase ends. Like, Jesus, it would be very, uh, uh, inconvenient if the whole hormonal kind of, you know, <laughs> horror of teenage years carried on into adulthood. I mean, Jesus Christ, can you imagine? Um, right. Uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think anybody given the choice would do teenage again. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't like being a teenager. I think being an adult is definitely better than being a child or a teenager. When people are like, oh, it's the best years of your life when you're a teenager, I'm like, what the hell are you on? How bloody awful is your adult life that being a teenager was preferable? Like, really? Like, you've got no autonomy? You can't... You know, you've got no independence. You, you can't do anything for yourself. Especially, like, when you're a child as well. You, you know, when you're a child, you just have to be in whatever situation you're in. You can't remove yourself from it. Do you know what I mean? It's just that not having control over yourself I've never liked that I think that's why I don't drink actually because I, I hate feeling like I'm not in control I hate being drunk I just hate that feeling and and like in drugs as well I just don't I don't even like taking codeine honestly because <laughs> it's just like I just hate that feeling of not being in control um and I think that's because that's how I felt when I was a child like I was not in control I didn't I wasn't in control of myself or my situation you know you know what I mean um Right, we need to start um, maxing this out, I've realised, because one of the achievements, you know how we're hunting all of the achievements? This is like the point of doing this, this is the Dragon Age project, to try and get all of the achievements. Uh, one of them is to max out the dual weapon thing. Although I do have, we are going to have another rogue who fights with dual weapons, so we could do it with them. But um, yeah, I've kind of been neglecting it, so, you know, we do need to get it done for the sake of the achievement. Oh, we've unlocked Shadow. Oh, we got to level 20 with a rogue. That's what we did. That's how we unlocked Shadow. Uh, right. So. Uh, uh, we 
we're just all talking about our traumatic childhoods. <laughs> I mean, just being a child is quite traumatic, isn't it? The last uh, it has been a long day. By the lines around your eyes, I dare say you look as old as I. And if I may say so, my lady, you appear to be getting younger by the day. Be careful who you flirt with, young man. <laughs> when you wake up beside me tomorrow morning, I'll be back to reminding you of your grandmother. Beside you? You heard what I said. It would not be the first time I woke to a younger man in my bed. Are all women this evil and conniving when they grow old? Just me, my dear. Just me. <laughs> These conversations are the best thing about this DLC. Um, right, okay, so where's the ogre? Because we should be able to get uh, Duncan's swords from the ogre, shouldn't we? There we go, Duncan's dagger, Duncan's sword. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. I might be able to equip Duncan Staggering Sword. Oh my goodness! Let's have a look. See what they uh, see what they like. And um, dexterity, critical backstab damage, and damage versus dragons. That's very specific. Um, does the Archdemon count as a dragon? I'm guessing it doesn't, because you know it's not. Um, and uh, where's his sword? Where's his sword? Where's his sword? Where's his sword, guys? Seriously, where's his sword? Well, there it is. We can't equip it because we don't have enough strength. Willpower, cunning, stamina, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That might be better than Marix, actually. For uh, Alistair. Because I can equip Marix. I think Bloodline's better, though. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, dexterity. Spirit resistance and armor penetration. Or health regeneration. Weakens nearby dog spawn and stamina regeneration, and then it's got more damage versus dog spawn than Bloodline does. Ooh, I don't know. That's a tough one, that. Which one's better, Bloodline or Marek's Blade? Uh... Uh... <laughs> Came the world's biggest chav. <laughs> we all went through weird phases. I sort of went goth to hippie. That was <laughs> sometimes within the same week, um, <laughs> depending on my mood. Yeah. I'll tell you what else is weird when you're a teenager is that you you kind of think that's how you're going to be forever. You know what I mean? You can't see that far ahead when you're a teenager. Um, you don't realise how different you're actually going to become once you grow up. Um, it's odd. It's, it's very odd being a teenager. <laughs> um, uh, also, hello, Eugene. I can't remember if you've been on before. I think you might have been, but I can't entirely remember. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's getting to be too many of you, you know? I'm just too popular. That's my problem. Too popular. Um, oh, we're debating Wynn's age again. Wynn's age is weird because it's... On the actual, like, codex or something... It's something weird, like 42 or something, like something stupidly young like that, which I think is generally considered to be like a mistake because she can't be. I mean, I know that maybe, you know, it's a medieval type world. Maybe you would expect people to have a lower life expectancy. Um, but I still think that that's just stupid, isn't it? <laughs> And, and I don't like to believe that. I like to believe that, like, she's in our 70s or something. Like, I don't care what the codex or anything else says. I think she, I, I believe that she is about 70. Because I think she's the kind of person who would be quite, you know, fit and sprightly for her age. Um, so, you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> um... Let you go back through the chat. I've missed stuff, you know. And I, I need to keep up on these tangents. Uh... Okay, right, okay. So, we're almost finished, aren't we? Have we killed the necromancer? Did we kill him? Are we finished? I think we're actually finished. Are we actually finished? Guys, are we done? Because I've just kind of, like, raced through this <laughs> whole section... <laughs> <laughs> going off on tangents about cats and retail and TV shows and all of that kind of stuff and kind of not been paying any attention to what we've actually been doing, but I think we're actually done, are we? <laughs> um, is officially 42. Yeah, it's something like that. It's something ridiculous. I tell you what, should we Google it? Hang on, I'm going to Google it on my laptop. 
Google it on my laptop. Mm, dragon age win age. Forty nine. She's forty nine during Origins officially. Like no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I choose not to believe that. I don't care. Well, I don't care what her official age is. Like no. The good thing about fiction is if you don't like something, you could just go, yeah, I choose not to believe that. You do that in real life, it kinda of causes problems, you know, when you say things like you you know, I choose to believe the earth is flat, you know what I mean? But <laughs> but with fiction, the good thing about fiction is if you don't like something about it, you could just go, Yeah, I'm gonna change that actually. That that in my head that I've changed that, okay? <laughs> So yeah, no, no, I'm not having Win be 49. Like no, um, my mother seems younger than Win, and my mother's like 63, 62, 63, something like that. Um, so yeah, no. Alistair, are you all right? Oh, they left him here to rot. We need to do something. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, in his underwear as well. Why does everybody wear the same underwear? Is there just like one underwear supplier in all of Thetas? <laughs> everybody wears thongs. Have you noticed that? Everybody wears thongs. Like, what the fuck? Um, okay. He's a royal blood and deserves a pirate. Bring him down and leave him to the wolves. He's dead and gone. Let the dogs won't have their fun. To be honest, what would Dora actually do? Because I know the right thing to do is to, you know, give him a pyre. Is that what Dora would do? I don't know if that's what Dora would do. Um, uh, I'm going to wait to see what you lot say. Sometimes you guilt me into doing the right thing. <laughs> um, sometimes you know Dora better than I do. Um, you know, You know how big I am on making sure that the, uh, you know, they, they stay true to their character. I don't think she would say let the dogs one have their fun. I, I, maybe she would give them a pyre. Uh, yeah, the wind being 49 thing doesn't make sense. It's not so much because of how she looks, it's because of how she acts and how she talks. Like a 49 year old would not talk like that. She's talking like, you know, she's lived this big, massive, long life and done everything and, you know, she's like content with her end and it's just like, oh, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we'll do the pyre. We'll do the pyre. He was a good man who hoped too much and died too young. He deserves what little honor we can afford to grant him. Sorry, I'm eating my uh, I'm eating my mini roll. I hope this isn't disrespectful <laughs> to eat my mini roll during a during a royal funeral. have honeycomb in it and it literally just tastes like a normal mini roll it's the bonfire night limited edition one which is called mini bonfire logs for bonfire night and it's got honeycomb in it you cannot taste the honeycomb in it it just tastes like a normal mini roll ah uh, anyway um hmm <laughs> <laughs> um 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at the fact that Common Misconception has just called Fred out for repeating himself. He does that a lot, Common Misconception. He likes to make sure that everybody has heard him, right? <laughs> it's just one of those things we don't mention. You know when your, your, your mate has like a, a, a mannerism or a habit or something that's just like a little bit annoying but not like awful and you're just like, you know what, we're just not going to mention it. We're just not going to mention it. We're just going to accept that. We're just going to accept the fact that Fred repeats himself a lot. <laughs> The same way that Fred is going to have to accept the fact that I forget to use grenades a lot. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to accept. <laughs> um, right, okay. So, which way are we going? We are going that away. Uh, yeah, leaving an Ostagar behind. I love this DLC. It's really nice, isn't it? And we've been going two and a half. Oh my god, we've now been going three hours. This might be a four hour one tonight, though, because I'm, I'm high on sugar from all the cake I've eaten. And everybody took like an hour and a half to turn up, so you know, I feel like we've only just started. <laughs> um. Uh. <laughs> uh. Yes, we do love Fred. Well, Fred, you're right. Of course we love Fred. I love Fred. Fred's watched. Fred's been here for every single live stream. He's never been more than like maybe 10 minutes late, and he's never left more than like 10 or 15 minutes before the end. That's crazy when you think about it, especially considering on Tuesdays he's at work. Like, that's mental. That's a level of dedication that, like, pff, I've never had for anything. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not dissing Fred. He's, he watched, he's watched every single one of my videos. He's commented on almost every single one. He reads stupid bits of fan fiction that I send him that I've written. And I'm just like, hey, read this. And then quite often nothing comes of it because I'm that kind of person. <laughs> you know, not dissing Fred. Um... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, right, okay, so, yeah, what should we do? Right, well, firstly, we've got some stuff to do, haven't we? We've got uh, the joining chalice, which is a gift for Alistair, because I, I just always feel like that's a weird gift to give him, but apparently, you know, apparently he likes it. There you go, Alistair. We need to get our approval with Alistair up. Because we're going to have to persuade him to sleep with Morrigan at the end of the game. Because we're going down that route. And uh, he has to really like you to agree to that. Uh, we need to sort everybody's inventories out. We need to enchant items. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is... I, uh, we're gonna have to try and figure out which swords are better than which. And I hate doing this because, you know, you know how much I hate making decisions. <laughs> um, okay, so. What have we picked up there? Oh, we've got the Nook Crusher. Um, is that better than the one Ogren's got equipped? So he's got Trian Small, which is 4 damage versus Darkspawn, and it's 13.5 on the damage. Now, the Nug Crusher is only 12.6 on the damage, but it's plus 4 to Dexterity, plus 100 to Stamina and Chance to Stun. That's better, right? That's better. Why have I given Ogryn Trian Small? Like, that's not even that good. Take that off there. And then Nug Crusher can have those, and he can, he can have the Nug Crusher. Now, we need to work out if... Duncan's sword is really good. I think we're going to give Duncan's sword to Alistair. Because what's that? Uh, armor penetration, 6 attack, and 3 cold damage. Versus 3 willpower, 3 cunning, 2 stamina regeneration, and 4 damage versus dark one. Right. That's better. Um, so Alistair will take his enchantments off of there. And we'll put them on Duncan's sword, and he can have Duncan's sword. Now, me, there's Duncan's dagger, which is plus 4 dexterity, plus 10% critical backstab damage, and 10 damage versus dragons, which is, yeah, um, you don't fight many dragons, versus 5 cunning, armor penetration, 6 attack, interrupt spell casting. Oh, I don't know which one's better, guys. The four dexterity is nice. But that's five to cunning. And six to attack. I think that one's better, you know. 
And then we've got Bloodline, which is three dexterity, spirit resistance, armor penetration, and damage versus dark spawn. And Marek's Blade, which is health regeneration, stamina regeneration, and damage versus dark. That's got more damage to the dark spawn. And it's got health and stamina regeneration. Whereas that one has three to dexterity, though. One to armor penetration and ten to spirit resistance. Um. Uh, Sorry, I'm reading the chat to see if any of you have any pearls of wisdom. Uh, <laughs> uh, Welsh Red's just buggered off. She's just like, uh, <laughs> I'll let her figure this out for us. <laughs> um, uh, to be honest, you could beat the game using any of those, so whichever you like best. Yeah, that's fair enough, to be honest. Um... Whichever one I equip, I'll then like, you know, completely forget that I've equipped it. I think I'll stick with what we've got, actually, because it, it looks cooler, doesn't it? And the three dexterity is nice, man. Uh, yeah. Of course, then we're going to get Starfang, aren't we? I can't remember how good Starfang actually is. Right, so we need to give Alistar... Uh, Duncan's Blade. Duncan sword. I think that's more poetic than giving him Marix as well, isn't it? I know Marix like his brother and everything, but you know, Duncan was his mentor, his father figure, his family. Um and then what about Kaelin's armour? How good is Kaelin's armour? Is it is it better than the Juggernaut? It might well be. I think it is, you know. Because I know the Juggernaut is like a stupid amount of resistances. What's that? One armor and 15 physical resistance. One armor and 20% chance to dodge attacks. One armor and critical backstab damage, which probably won't be as useful on him. One armor and 10 mountain resistance, which is the same. Or are all of the resistances better? Because that's what, 5%, 5%, and 10%. So together it'll be 20. He's got 20% resistance on everything. Versus a bit of extra armour. Oh, it is actually better. It's got a better armour rate in itself as well. Oh, I hate making decisions like this, guys. Um... Guys, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do, guys. I don't know. Uh... <sighs> Sorry, I'm reading the chat. Uh... Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think he's better in the Juggernaut, but then Kalen's just like that's like twenty one point eight eight armor versus eighteen point three eight. And he's got extra armor on top of that. That's, and what is it? What physical resistance? Twenty percent chance to dodge attacks. That's pretty good. Fifty percent critical backstab damage. Oh, guys, guys, what do I do? Stick with the existing armor, says Fred. Mm, I don't know if I trust Fred. <laughs> can you trust Fred? I mean, can you really? <laughs> um, the Redcliffe shield is definitely better than Kaelin's shield is. Well, Kaelin's looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, with the lions on it. But the Redcliffe shield's better. Uh, I don't know. Guys, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Thing is, Kalen's armor is nicer, isn't it? Look at it. Oh, look at it. It's so sexy. And to be fair, all of the things that Alistair is resistant to in that armor is mostly just going to be, you know, helping him against mages, isn't it? Whereas this will help him against everything. Well, we'll put him in Kalen's armor. 
Um, and then we need to get Ogren. Ogren. Nug Crusher. And he still doesn't have any like, rings or anything. Like, oh my god. And that's us. Re repeater Gloves. Rapid aim and armor penetration. That's going to be for Leliana, isn't it? Unless she's got something better on. Ah, she doesn't have enough strength. <laughs> oh well, her Dalish gloves give her plus one to dexterity, so you know, that's better. And we'll just sell all of our shit. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> um, uh, I'll just read the chat, don't mind me. Uh, sorry, Bodan, I was reading the chat. Right, okay, so... Sell all of this shit. We're not going to sell Duncan's Dugger. That would be disrespectful, I feel. Sell tree and small, though. I don't care about that. Uh, sell all of this. And we'll not sell the Juggernaut stuff either, just in case. I'll sell the repeater gloves. I don't need them. Uh, I think we need to have a little trip up to, uh, yes, mm -hmm. that place. Uh-huh, that place that we need to go to. Yep, you know what I'm talking about. You know the place I'm talking about, guys, that one. Mm-hmm, Soldier's Peak, that's the one. Jesus. <laughs> uh, so we can put some stuff in the storage chest and we can get uh, stuff and... Uh, right, I think that'll do us for now. Right, okay, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, whoop, take a quick break. Uh, and I shall be back soonish, and we shall head to Soldier's Peak, and we'll get Starfang and sort our inventory out, and then we will do something else, I think.
Okay. Do you want to hear what I just did? This might be the most magpie thing I've ever done in my entire life, to be fair. So, I went to make myself another cup of tea. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm daydreaming a bit. I'm thinking to myself about what we're going to do after we've been to Soldier's Peak and sorted all of that out. You know, what we're going to do next. If we've got any side quests I need wrapping up, that kind of thing, you know. And I boiled the kettle like you do when you're making a cup of tea, you know. And the kettle boiled and I poured the water into the cup like you do, you know. And I was letting it steep for a bit like you do. Thinking to myself, uh, what are we going to do? You know, we could do this, we could do that. And I got my teaspoon out and I'm stirring it, you know. And then I... <laughs> <laughs> oh god I went to uh, take the tea bag out <laughs> I went to take the tea bag out no fucking tea bag in there I have just poured myself a cup of hot water <laughs> Oh my god, I was just, I was laughing at myself. I was like, that is, that is, yeah, that's me. <laughs> In fact, I stood there, really stirring the thing I didn't notice. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, so I, I had to uh, redo it. Because I'm not sitting here drinking a cup of hot water. <laughs> off the giggles <laughs> oh god uh. sorry you know what I'm like when I get into one of my laughing fits <laughs> God, my giggling fits are like the most exercise I get. <laughs> um, uh, right. You're having a on, says Common Misconception. Sadly, I'm not. <laughs> um, um, I need to go back through the chat because, you know, I, I always, I, I feel like I'm missing out on stuff and it bothers me. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, South African friend's back. Hello, South African friend. Uh, uh, this is why I need to go back through the chat, you see. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, oh, you all thought I'd been eaten by the cat, did you? Yeah. My cat's a blood majors. Yeah, that's canon now. That's We'll make that official. Um, um, uh, <laughs> um, Reminds me of the time she went to turn the heating off and came back with some toast and a cup of tea. Oh god, yes, that did happen. <laughs> that did happen. That was ages ago. How long have you been here, Welsh friend? That was, yeah, that was that was back when I was in my old flat. I remember that. I went to turn the heating off and forgot to turn the heating off and just made a cup of tea and some toast instead. I remember that, yeah. And I came back and I was like, oh fuck, I was going to turn the heat off. <laughs> and the time that I was recording a video went to the toilet and forgot I was recording the video and just like went off and did a load of other stuff and then it was like half an hour and I was like shit I was recording a video <laughs> honestly I despair of myself sometimes I don't know how I've made it this far without like you know dying <laughs> I don't know how I'm still alive <laughs> um, all right right I'm eating my last bit of cake oh that's nice that is that's a um Mr. Kipling chocolate and orange slice. It's very nice, that. Mmm. Can't go wrong with Mr. Kipling, can you? 
Very, very good, Mr. Kipling Cakes. Stupidly overpriced, like. Ridiculous. Like fucking three pounds something for eight tiny little cake slices. <sighs> oh, the Halloween one was only one pound fifty, but that's because it was on special offer. <laughs> well, bits of trivia that you need to know. <laughs> oh God. No wonder you don't drink the combination would be a disaster. I know, right? <laughs> I'm daft enough as I am, thank you very much. Um, okay. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Should we go to, uh, should we go to, um, yes, that place, Soldier's Peak. Mm -hmm. I'll put the game back on. There we go. I'm assuming that's put the game back on. Why is little screen that's showing me what you're seeing is kind of crushed so i'm going to refresh <coughs> me uh me laptop page hopefully i'm not going to lose the chat or anything you never know what's going to happen <laughs> uh <coughs> yes there we go marvelous okay so we'll head up to soldier's peak <laughs> Now it's better than later, says Dora. It's not my motto. <laughs> later is better than now. That's my motto. Never do today what you can put off until tomorrow. Uh, should we take the girls with us uh, since we're just going on a trip up the hill? Uh, so. <clears throat> okay. I'm still laughing at myself, sorry. <laughs> um, it's fun being me. I'm basically just like my own source of entertainment. I just kind of, you know, make myself laugh at all the stupid things I do. <laughs> and there's a doggy. Uh, right, we need to talk to what's his name, don't we? That's Darfan. Um, in my travels, I found this strange metal in a crater. This, this is star metal. If you give this to me, I will craft for you a thing of legend. Uh, a star metal long sword, uh, a two-handed sword. I don't need a two-handed sword. We'll have a long sword. And so it shall be. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. May it serve you well. I must rest after my exertions. Warden. Okay, uh, so I can't remember if Starfang's actually any good. Oh, I can't equip it anyway. 31 strength. 31 strength! Are you off my love? 3 dexterity, 3 damage, 2.5 armor penetration. Eh, that's quite good. I mean, I mostly just equip it because it's cool having, like, you know, a, a, a sword, a unique sword that was crafted just for you with, like, you know, really rare metal. It has its own name and everything like that. And it's just like, it's the kind of thing a hero would have, doesn't it? That's usually why I equip it. Uh, but. Maybe give it to Alistair. I think what Alistair's got on is better though. Alistair is not in the party, so I can't check. Um, yeah, what is my strength currently? Twenty-six. Yeah. Well, oh, that's with it boosted up. Does it have to be the base strength, or does it being boosted up count? I think being it. Yes. Um, I think it being boosted up counts, doesn't it? Level win up while we're here. Uh, and ooh, what should we give her? What should we give her? <laughs> uh, uh, did you pickpocket the dog for a gift bone? Yeah, I can pickpocket the dog. Oh my god. Um, no, I have not done that. Um, love the idea that the sword forged given to Dora Bella and she can't lift it yet. Um, also, I think if she equipped it, it would, like, cut her ankles off, wouldn't it? Like, when she's walking. <laughs> um, it does that on the elves, so it must definitely do it on the dwarves. Uh, I don't know. What do I want to give Win? We've not invested in her arcane warrior-ness, like, at all. Um, we'll do that on a different playthrough, I think. Um, 
for some more tacky stuff. We could start giving her hexes, actually, because the hexes are really good. Give her some hexes. That's what we'll do. And Liliana, you can have uh, Dexterity and Coning. Forgetting how to level up rogues here. And you can have... We'll let you have the Song of Courage. Why not? You are a bard, after all. <laughs> uh, getting boosted does count for equipping. Yeah, I think we established that in a previous live stream. It really annoys me that you can't get back into Soldier's Peak. Like, why don't you just let me back inside, guys? Let me back inside. It's my castle. <laughs> we reclaimed it for the Wardens, right? Uh, when I was writing my fanfiction, it was like following on from Awakening and it was like, you know, it was it was called Tales of Vigil's Keep. That, oh, that's what it was going to be called. It never actually got that much of it written. Um, and it was basically about uh, my canon warden and how she like, um, you know, became the warden commander and how she was trying to rebuild the Ferelden Grey Wardens and just like all of the stuff that she was doing and, <clears throat> and all of her just like adventures after the uh, blight and stuff like that. And uh, she turned Soldier's Peak into like a training ground. So this is where they sent new recruits because it was like out of the way and everything. That was that was my idea for what Soldier's Peak was going to be. Yeah, I should maybe actually write that at some point. <laughs> Because I had some good ideas, you know. I had some good ideas. Um, but I'm busy with my uh, Ostrich one at the minute. Uh, which I'm doing really well on. I've stuck with it much longer than I normally stick with anything. And I'm really, like, invested in it. And, you know, I think it's going to be good. Anyway, we need to... We should take the Blood Dragon Plate. We can put Sten in the Blood Dragon Plate. Because the Blood Dragon Plate is really flipping good. We'll put the Juggernaut Armour in there. We'll put Caelan's Shield in there. We'll put Duncan's Dagger... Marek's blade. Keep stealth on for the minute. Um, yeah, that's us, in it? We still have loads of elf fruit. Do we need to go and buy some more? No, don't destroy anything. Uh, we need to go and buy some more elf fruit. Oh my goodness! Although we're pretty good on the uh, health potions at the minute, aren't we? But once we're heading into the final battle, we'll need a million bajillion. Uh, Uh, just reading the uh, reading the chat. Love to read it, would you, little devil? Which one? <laughs> the ostrich one, because you'll be able to read the ostrich one eventually. I'm planning on hopefully starting to publish that one in the new year, or like maybe not quite in the new year, maybe further towards like February-ish, because. My idea is it sort of follows the same timeline as Dragon Age 2. So it follows like, although it goes a bit further than that because it goes like, it it starts from like just after the Blight ended and then it goes to just before the Inquisitor. Because it, it's, it's like the Inquisitor before she's the Inquisitor because my canon Inquisitor is a human mage. So it's her like in the Ostrich Tower before, it, or like in the years leading up to the... Um, the Mage Rebellion and everything, and at, at the start she's like 16 and she's just past her harrowing, and then it's like however many years it is later, um, about 10 or ten, ten, 10 and a bit, because it's going to go up to like, it's going to go past the end of Dragon Age 2, because it's going to like show the Mage Rebellion, and what happens to her throughout the majority of the Mage Rebellion, and then it's going to like end just as she's heading to Haven, right? That's what it is. But it's done, like, the same way that Dragon Age 2, you know how it's done in three acts? Well, it's also going to be done in three acts, and each act is going to cover about a year. And um, it's going to, like, go through the seasons. So they start off at, like, just the end of winter, beginning of spring. And then we'll go through spring, through summer, through autumn, through winter, right? And then it'll be, like, the end of that act, and then the next act. But it, the next act will be set, like however many years further on but then that'll cover a year as well that's like my current plan and i thought it would be cool to actually be publishing it at the right times of the year you know what i mean so like the uh, the spring chapters get covered get published in spring and then the summer ones get published in summer blah 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 blah, blah. whether it'll work out that way or not i don't know <laughs> but i thought that would be kind of cool and it would give me enough ch uh, uh, time to like get enough of it written it's pretty well planned, though. I'm impressed with myself with how well I've planned it, because usually when I'm writing stuff, I just kind of go in blind and just kind of, like, make it up as I go along, which is why my projects never get finished, because eventually they just become too convoluted and confusing. But, um, 
Oh yeah, I'm planning now, guys. I'm, 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 oh, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Right, what should we do now? What should we do now? Should we have a look through our, um, because we'll go for another hour. I don't feel like stopping yet. I know we normally stop at the three hour mark, but, um, I'm going for another hour. Um, uh, if you have to bring Sten along on anything, yeah, I know, but we'll need him in the final battle. <laughs> um, uh, 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 Sounds fantastic. You better send me the link. Oh, don't you worry. I will announce it on the channel. I will, I will flip in. <laughs> I'll plug that so much. I'll be mentioning it in every live stream. I'll be like, guys. <laughs> uh, I'll publish it in multiple places and everything. I might even, I, I was thinking of maybe like having like a blog or something to publish it on as well, as well as doing it on fan fiction sites. Because I've put a lot of planning into it. Like there's been, I've, I've like done family trees. I've drawn maps. Um, I've done like... <clears throat> Loads of backstory that's never actually going to come up in the actual story. Do you know what I mean? Like, if all the characters have, like, really intricate backstories. And most of it, there won't be room for any of it to actually, you know, come up. Um, and I was thinking, I need, I, I, you know, I would like to show all of that stuff off as well. That would be cool, wouldn't it? If I had, like, if I did, like, a blog or something where I could put up, like, all the maps I've drawn and things. I don't know. I don't know. I know. I'm pretty serious about it. I'm, I'm serious about it, guys. I think, you know. Anyway, um, what do we need to do? Right. So we've got Denerim stuff. We could go and get the Drake scale armor. That's a thing we could do. Um, those two, we have to go into the alienage for those, and we'll leave that till next time. Watch God of the Reaching, I can't be asked with. <laughs> um, we've got a lot of major collective stuff. I think we've missed a place of power somewhere, but I don't know where. We've done the Brazilian Forest, I know that. I'm pretty sure we've done the Deep Roads. We've definitely done the Circle Tower, so we must have missed one in Denerim. Unless it's in the alienage, it might be. Um, travel to the Brazilian forest and slay the Cabal of Malafacarum. That, apparently we have not done that yet. Uh, oh yeah, that's the Tendlerian potions thing. Uh, uh, yes, deliver Tendlerian potions to Knight Commander Harith on behalf of the Mages Collective. If Mages giving questionable gifts to Templars doesn't seem right, you can go to Knight Commander Tavish in Denerim and testify about the bribe with the Lyrian potions as evidence. Yes, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll do Harith. He's in Redcliffe, isn't he, I think? Um, find five scrolls of Bannister. Have we not done that? We've been everywhere where there are scrolls of Bannister, haven't we? Have we missed some? Uh, place of power, the um, alienage tree, yes. Oh, soulmate's here, hello, soulmate. Hello, soulmate. Um, uh, oh, Fred can hang around until 6.30. We might not be going by 6.30. That's past my bedtime, man. I get up at 3 in the morning for work, remember? Although I'm not in work tomorrow, so I suppose. Um, uh, Read the hell out of Tales of Vigils Keep too. Yeah, I would like to do that one. The trouble is I never really had a storyline for it. I think that was the problem. I, I, I had loads of other stuff. Like, I, you know, I knew what role everybody was going to play, what characters were going to be in it. I had, like, you know, places and stuff like that. I never had a story. Stories are what I struggle with, you know, when it comes to writing. I love writing. I love the actual act of writing. I love writing a scene. I love describing things. I love putting things into words, like emotions particularly, or, or, or like, you know, an object or something like that. I do that in my head all the time. Like, that's just how my mind works. I'm always just like, I'll see something and I'll be like, how would I describe that? Or I'll be, I'll be feeling something and I'm like, how would I describe that? Um, sometimes it's good for taking me out of myself, actually, if I'm like, if I'm really anxious about something, rather than focusing on the fact I'm really anxious, I'll be like, oh, how would I actually describe this feeling if I was writing it in a story? You know, stuff like that. I love that. The actual coming up with, like, storylines that I struggle with a lot more um, <laughs> that's a more kind of you know technical side of it for me but uh, yeah um, uh, uh, reading stories out on YouTube yes I have considered that as well um, I don't know how good I'd be <laughs> um, you have to act don't you 
when you're reading stuff out because I've done it before recorded myself reading my uh, writing I've never like put it up online or anything like that but it's harder than you might think um um uh, don't don't be sorry soulmate I, I don't mind you being late I definitely was not saying anything rude about the people who hadn't turned up earlier <laughs> definitely not <laughs> I think I did say something didn't I at the beginning it was just Fred and common misconception for like the first hour and a half <laughs> and I was like where are all those assholes <laughs> it's alright soulmate you're forgiven I forgive you anything man um, uh, I missed one in the elven ruin, did I? What, a scroll of Bannister? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Timothy, man. You missed a scroll in the elven ruin. I didn't say because I didn't want to be a know it all. Flip it, Eck. <laughs> You'd rather make me go back to the elven ruin. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I can be asked going back to the Elven Ruin, to be honest. I'm not f too fussed about, um, like, completing all the quests in this playthrough. It's not, I'm not going to be, like, a completionist uh, while I'm doing the Dragon Age project, because normally I am a completionist, but, like, when I'm doing the Dragon Age project, like, we're going to be doing eight playthroughs, guys. Like, how are you know, I can't be finishing everything in every single one. Like, I probably won't bother fighting the dragon in this one, for example. Probably just not going to bother, but, you know, I will do it in other ones. So, like, across all of the playthroughs, we'll end up doing everything, but we're not going to do everything in every playthrough, you see what I mean? Um... <sighs> we haven't done Wynn's personal quest, have we? We're probably not going to. We're probably not going to do Sten's personal quest, I can't be honest with that. I don't think Dora and Sten get on particularly well, to be honest. Um... Uh, I tell you what, we'll go and deliver those Lyrian potions and we'll have a think. <laughs> we'll have ourselves a think. Uh, one of the graves in the Elven Forest is a site of power. I think... Uh, uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat. Hang on. <laughs> We're just having a chat now, aren't we? We're just like, we forget about the game, we're just having a chat. Uh, Magpie was great at writing romantic scenes. I could not be bothered to write my story. Yeah, I wrote I wrote a few romantic scenes for Fred. Uh, <laughs> uh, Timothy will narrate it for me. You're from Texas, aren't you, Timothy? Are you from Texas, like, originally? Do you have a Texas accent? Because I, I, I quite enjoy a Texas accent. I quite enjoy that. I like, uh, yeah, there's a there's a... YouTuber that I watch, um, he's a sort of vlogger um, from Kentucky, and honestly, his accent is the best thing in the world. I just, oh god, I could listen to it all day. All day. <laughs> in New Orleans, oh my. You know, NCIS, New Orleans. I watch that just for the accents. I think it's the best thing in the world. I could just. I <laughs> It's just, I don't watch it for the story. I have absolutely no idea what's going on when I'm watching it, but I'm just like, oh my god, the accents, man. The accents. I love it. <laughs> anyway, um,. Where are we going? I can't remember. We're going to Redcliffe, aren't we? Uh, should we take the dream team? Yes. Take the dream team. Uh... Oh, you might be able to visit the hidden graveyard in Haven now. Yes, we forgot to do that, didn't we? I know you told me about that. Because I don't know anything about it. But you told me about it, and then I forgot about it. So tell you what, should we go to Haven? Just, you know, for fun. Because we're going to go for, like, another hour, but I don't want to actually, like, start on the proper dinner room stuff. Because um, I just feel like going for another hour, that's all. Um, but, yeah, we're not going to start on the actual dinner room stuff. Oh, we're being attacked. Um, until the next live stream. Well, you know, we'll save that for the next live stream. Which will be on Halloween, by the way. <laughs> Could be our Halloween live stream. Uh, Wynn can just do a bit of a fireball over there. Who are we fight? Oh, elven scouts. We've got the elves. There we go. Bit of a crushing prison on that shriek there. Uh, yeah, we'll go and have a look at the hidden graveyard then. 
And then we'll go and give the Lyrian potions to what's his name. And I don't know. Maybe we just have a wander about. <laughs> just have a wander about to see what we feel like doing. Did she just deflect an arrow with her sword? That was very cool, Dora. That was quite awesome. Your Jedi skills. Alistair looks like he's just attacking the elves. Hopefully Alistair is not attacking the elves. Uh, uh, um, yeah. I'll do it with another fireball, maybe. Maybe? Maybe? Mm, mm, they're a bit spaced out. Okay, so... I can hear a shriek somewhere. Is he killing the elves? Oh, oh, was Alistair going after the shriek that has just killed all the elves? Did I, did I just condemn the elves to death by not killing that shriek? Was Alistair actually charging in like a hero to uh, save the elves and then I was just like, no, Alistair. Um... Oh, you've used your Paralyze, Morrigan. Oh, that's a bit rubbish. Oh, see if you can do a uh, Winter's Cross. Well, I think we've saved one elf. Yeah, we saved one elf. Oh, I'm sorry, elves. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there was only like two of them, because I can only save one body. Uh, yeah. Uh, Alistair needs a level up. Doof, 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 doof. He doesn't need that much in strength anymore, does he? We'll put most of it into dexterity. And holy smite! Why not? <laughs> holy smite! <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you talk to the elf. Our tribe fights for you, Warden. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Loot all of these guys. Sorry, I don't like it when I go quiet, but sometimes I just don't have anything to say, you know what I mean? <laughs> Gone off on so many tangents today. Oh, you've missed so many tangents, soulmate. So many. You've missed like about a bloody half hour rant about retail. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lovely chat about what TV programs we're watching at the minute while the cat was sat on me and, you know, I couldn't do anything for like 10 minutes because there was a cat sat on me and she wouldn't let me anywhere near the keyboard. We just had like a 10 minute chat about, you know, what, what telly we're watching at the minute. You know, it was great. <laughs> um. <sighs> Where's this graveyard now then? Behind the house on the right, just as you're entering the village. Okay. Uh, a house on the right. Oh, there's things to kill. Oh, I never killed you, did I not? <laughs> oh, bless your little heart. Have you been stood here all alone all this time, like the last survivor of the uh, the village? Oh. Oh, that's sad. Oh, well, we're going to put you out of your misery then. And there he goes. <laughs> oh, bless him. Bless his little cotton socks. Okay, so this would be... Oh, I can see gravestones. Okay. How do I get to it, though? Is there a gate or something? How do I get to it? Common misconception. Help. Uh, that's a chicken. I can hear over there. I was like, Jesus, I thought that was a person. Oh, what happened to the... um? The little boy. Oh, there's a way around there. Yeah, the little boy, because we presumably don't kill the little boy. The one who was given the creepy nursery rhyme. Wow, that's a lot of gravestones. Okay. The LHC did it. All right, all In right. memory of Andrew Farrell, captain of the... Ca Got it. Di 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 that disappeared too quickly. Captain of the Ostagar Tower Guard and champion of the Lothring Brew Fest. Uh-huh. Here lies a man with few regrets and many ailments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, tombed in the earth of this grave. Great, uh, great, great grandfather guy. Yeah, yes, that guy. Building seven. 
<laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> um, to do needs writing pass. Uh, whoops, 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 whoops. I've got nothing. Uh, in loving memory of multiplayer, oh. <laughs> no, I don't like multiplayer. Who likes multiplayer, man? Why do you want other people interfering with your games? Like, no, I've never understood multiplayer. Uh, I'll just put Cal's lock on accidentally. Um, horses, capes, barbarians, RIP. Uh, Jim, I can do access to the Soul Swallower. In memory of John Doe, human commoner. Oh, would that be the um, the the human commoner origin that got scrapped? Yeah, this is all like in jokes, isn't it, for the actual like developers and stuff like that. Jennifer Helper, Queen of the Dwarves. Okay, I don't understand all of these. Uh, what? Who? Unloved, unmourned? Someone I can't pronounce. Okay. Uh, in memory of a Luvian dark star who fought the darkspawn horde. <sighs> Fought the Dark Swan Horde resent relentlessly for four years. I told you I was sick. <laughs> um, I love I love gravestones like in real life. I have funny things written on them, like you know, whoops and things like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my brother always said he wanted I plan to live forever. Whoops written on his gravestone. Um, in memory of our Thane Kenneth bastard. Uh, Remember, in memory of the who is the Lowe's forever frozen in never ending winter nights. A ferret by any other name, would he still stink? <laughs> uh, questing for the Black Rock Sword, be back soon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm, sorry, I'm reading the chat now. Uh, uh, we did have fun playing the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, Fred. You're right. You're right. Um, poor Elburn, she couldn't even make it as a male blacksmith. What? Uh, waiting to respawn. Uh, oh my god. Best tax evader ever, apparently. In memory of Chris, who died in a crunch. <laughs> He wanted a Mabari, I said keep it fed, and he didn't listen, now he's here. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, and then we're back to those ones, and then there's more in the middle, is there? Yeah. Uh, Mary uh, Tudge, always take the high road. In memory of Marcus of the Grey Gardens, we... What was that? All right, all right. Oh my god. Uh, we didn't even know who he was or where he came from. <laughs> he lies Clyde, his life was full. <laughs> Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, words. Fell through the world at 1034, 74, something or another. Uh, Cheryl was not buried here, she was cremated. Corey May, here I stay. And then we're back to. No, here I spam. Good riddance, and may you never haunt us again. <laughs> yeah, and we've got these ones over here. Once they have you hip deep in mad nugs, hang on, Now's better than our later. screams deafen their keen ears, we will be nug poop. Okay. Memory of Andy, uh, pepperoni and cheese. Mm. Got it. In memory of Jessica, Master Craig, mm, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Someone get this rock off me. Made it through green light approval. It took a bit longer than expected. <laughs> that one's good. I like that one. Uh, Ross Gardner, fearless, hairy, and thoroughly exhausted. Mm. There we go. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's quite cool. I quite like that. Never knew that was here. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. 
Told you I was ill was actually on Spike Milligan's tombstone. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking I'm sure that, that was on somebody's tombstone. Um, there are some funny tombstones in the world. I can't think of any others right at this moment. I would want something funny on my tombstone. Well, I don't know if I want to be buried. <laughs> I'm funny because I don't know. I don't. I, we're not going to go off into a tangent about death like what we did last time. But I'm just saying. Um, yeah. I don't really know if I want to be buried. And I've always said I wanted to be cremated. But then I'm like, I would kind of like my skeleton to survive though. Because then, you know, I could be like, you know, discovered in like 2000 years time or something like that. And they could piece me together and put me in a museum or something. That would be quite cool, right? But I don't really think I want to be buried. Um, maybe just shoot me off into space or something like that. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Donate me to science or something, you know. I'd do that. I'd be donated to science. I'd be, yeah. I'd be donated to science. What actor was it? Uh, some actor can't remember who it was who donated his skull to the Royal Shakespeare Company and they used him as Hamlet. As uh, Yorick, rather, in Hamlet. I can't remember who that was. But the uh, the skull that they use, the Royal Shakespeare Company uses, is like an actual actor's skull that because he, he donated it to them to, to be Yorick. And I believe he actually gets credited as Yorick. I think that's actually a thing. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, right, where do we want to go? Where do we want to go? We need to go to Redcliffe. To give those thingies to that guy. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, right, hang on. Give me a second, because I need to turn my light on, because it's getting dark. Uh, do, 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 do. Boop. There we go, my light's on. My light's on. But nobody's home. <laughs> um, Right, okay, so, so, uh, okay. Uh, I can hear my cats running around. Dear me. It's their time, it's the time that they wake up and just start running around like lunatics. I thought they, oh, there he is. I was gonna say, I thought the Night Commander guy was here, but there he is. Hello, Night Commander person. Move along, I have a gift from the Rangers Collective. Appreciate correspondence from my upstanding friends in the collective. On behalf of myself and my men, I thank you. I'll make sure the collective's generosity is reciprocated. On your way now. Oh god, my tea's gone cold. I just took a massive mouthful of it, thinking it would be warm when it was cold. Mm. Mm. Ah, ah, ah. Is there anything worse in the world than cold tea? Um. Clocks going back tonight. Yes, I know. We're getting an extra hour in bed tomorrow. Very exciting. I love it when the clocks go back. I do not like it when the clocks go forward. That's not fun, is it, in spring? It's not fun. I love it when the clocks go back, though. Uh, uh, there's a major collective person around here somewhere, isn't there? On the dock. I'm going hand in that... Uh, Quest. Talk to the Chantry just in case they have any. We've completed any quests for them. We haven't apparently. Have we completed any quests for you? Make nope. Uh, yeah, I love it when it starts getting dark early though. I'm weird. I like I like the early nights. I like it when it's dark in the morning as well. The early nights and the late mornings. I kind of I kind of enjoy it. Uh, like at the minute, the sun's coming up at about eight o'clock. Although it'll go back to seven o'clock, obviously. But then it'll it'll still end up at around eight o'clock eventually. A little something extra for friendship. He said that without moving his mouth. That's terrifying. Um, uh, mm. <laughs> uh, right. Reading the chat, don't mind me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I, I like it when the sun doesn't come up for, like, ages. I don't know. I'm weird. I'm weird. I like it dark. Dark and cold. That's how I like it. Preferably raining. That's me. That's me happy. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you talk about iced tea. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna, we're not getting into a discussion about iced tea. Yeah. Tea shouldn't be iced, all right? That's all I'm saying. Although I do make iced tea. Like, like, US Southern iced tea. It's, like, really sweet, isn't it? It's like sugary. Like, I mean, try making it without the sugar. And then tell me you like it. 
Because I mean, yeah, I can I can understand how why you would like iced tea with like lots of sugar in, so it's really sweet. But when it's got no sugar in, like no. <laughs> when I used to have sugar in my tea, it wasn't as bad when it went cold. But you know, I'm being sensible these days, guys. Uh, I eat too much sugar as it is. Uh, right, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, right, where are we going? What are we doing? What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. I've got no idea. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> uh... <laughs> um, uh, Magpie's nightmare iced tea made from turnips. I think that's anybody's nightmare, Fred. I think, firstly, you mentioned the vegetable that must not be named. So, you know, that's like... That's bad. <laughs> it's bad for you, Fred. You broke a law there. You broke a magpie law. And secondly, like, I don't think anybody is going to think, hmm, tea made from turnips and kind of go, yeah, that's that's a thing. Like, <laughs> Oh, hang on. Welsh Fred just has, so. <laughs> yeah, um, right, okay. So, you notice that the blight completely avoids the Brazilian forest. And yet, when you go through the Brazilian forest, you get attacked by dog spawn. Isn't that weird? Um, there was, was there not something we needed to do in Denerim? Was there not somebody that we needed to talk to in Denerim? Drake scale armor, Wade. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll do. Um, yeah. We'll go to Denerim and we'll talk to Wade about the Drake scale armor. Because then we'll finish in Denerim, you see. And then next time, we can pick up where we left off and just like go straight into the proper Denerim stuff. Mm, and go into like, you know, the Arles estate and the alien age and then the lands meet and then the final battle. Getting close to the end game here, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading the, uh, reading the chat. Enough sugar to stun a grizzly bear, yeah. I've I've watched videos of them making it and I'm like, that is a lot of sugar. <laughs> like, I mean I have a very sweet tooth. I like my sugar, and that is a lot of sugar. Um, <laughs> um actually what was funny was the guy making it was like, Do you know what actually I don't have that much sugar compared to most people? And I was like, What? <laughs> um uh, and I love sugar. I used to have four sugars in my tea when I used to have sugar in tea. Yeah, that was bad. I still have that many in coffee on the very rare occasions that I drink coffee, but I'm not really a coffee person, luckily. But when I do have coffee, I do. I, I, I can't drink coffee without sugar. So very occasionally, if I fancy a cup of coffee, I do have four sugars in it. Yeah, that's a lot of sugar. Uh, what am I doing here? Wade, that's right. Jesus Christ, woman. <laughs> Focus. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what happened Alzheimer's as my guy? Uh, God knows what I'll be like when I go through the menopause. Jesus. I remember what my mother was like. My mother, when she went through the menopause, she talks about there was this day that she came out of our local co-op. Our local co-op that she went into several times a week. She came out of that co-op and she had absolutely no idea where she was, how to get home, which car was hers, anything. She just like, just not, just, she just didn't know where she was. She walked, and she just didn't know where she was. That was like the brain fog that you get. You could you can imagine what I'll be like. Jesus, I'm already like that. <laughs> I should not be thinking about the menopause. I'm only like, what, 28, 29 next month, you know? Not far away, 8th of November. And she turned out to be an insufferable hag. You'd have liked her. You two have a lot in common. And you let her berate you without punishment. It's moments like this when I truly appreciate the difference between you and me. <laughs> it is moments like this when I truly wonder at the difference between you and a toadstool. Um, four Welsh friends says in the chat. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> 29, you're a baby, says common misconception. Well, you always think that of people who are younger than you, don't you? Like, when I was, like, 25, I remember thinking, oh, my God, I'm really old now. I'm, like, 25. And yet, now, when people are 25, I'm like, oh, you're just a wee Ben, man. You're just a wee -in. You're just little. So you always feel like you're old and everybody younger than you is a baby, always. Doesn't matter what age you are. Well, once you're past the age of about 90, maybe. That's just always how you feel. Um, yeah. One of my mates is, like, 23, and I just look at her with disgust. I'm like, how, how can you, like, 23? My God, I just, I hate you for being so young. 23? Jesus. I can't, I can't even imagine being that young. <laughs> I feel so old. Um, but then when I'm, like, 40, I'll be looking back and going, oh, my God, I was so young. <laughs> um... Uh, yes, Welsh friend seems appalled that I have I, I had four chocolates in taste. I think you can't taste it if you want, like, something like my, my mother will put half a teaspoon of sugar in her tea. And I'm like, you can't taste it. Like, you literally, you cannot taste the sugar in there until you get to up to at least three spoons. <laughs> I just have a very sweet tooth. Anyway, hello, Heron. Welcome back. You looking for fine armor? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, little devil, your birthday's in November too. Does that mean you're a Scorpio as well? You a fellow Scorpio? Uh, and you're going to be 23, are you? <laughs> you're just a weird man. Uh, most of my subscribers are, are older. I seem to attract older people. I'm, I'm re like in real life as well. Most of my friends are older than me. Like my best friend is like fourteen years older than me. <laughs> Majority of my friends are older than me. Um, I don't know. I'm not comfortable around older people. I don't know. I always have been. I've never really f like fit in with my own age group. Like when I was a teenager and a kid and stuff like that. I was I was the kid that wanted to talk to the teacher rather than talk to the other kids. Do you know what I mean? I was the kid who would like sit next to the teachers at lunch because their conversation was more interesting to me. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yes, Drake scales. Of course. She's back. She's back. Have you reconsidered? I can make such fine armor with your scales. Oh my God, Welsh friend is a Scorpio. Oh, get in. Yes. <laughs> we're the best, aren't we? Aren't we the best? I think we're the best. Um. Uh. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Uh, make the armor be quick about it. I'll pay ten sovereigns extra. Make it good and quickly. How much will it cost? Will it take long to make? She can make quality armor with this. Uh, I'll pay ten sovereigns extra. I've got just money to burn these days. Excellent. You won't regret it. Think of the possibilities, Heron. Think of it. I'm trying to stop. Uh. Oh, Timothy's a Leo. Uh. <laughs> uh. A mascot could be Scorpio. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, right. Uh, right. So we're going in the Drake scales. <laughs> to be fair, astrology never counts for anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm one of those people who believes in that sort of shit. I mean, up to the point where I... Fucking hell, what was that? Was that one of the cats? I don't know, something just banged. Um, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I don't like to live my life by it or anything. I don't like go around going, I don't like meet somebody and go, oh no, we can't be friends because of your star sign or anything like that. Well, yeah, I kind of believe in that shit. I believe in ghosts and demons and everything, man. <laughs> when you hear those stories when somebody's like, oh, I murdered somebody, but it's because I was like possessed by the devil. Uh, part of me is like, yeah, I could believe that. <laughs> Very open-minded, you know. Uh, my gran my uh, granny is a uh, medium though. Psychic, whatever you want to call it. So I suppose I kind of, you know, yeah. Um, you know, whether you believe in that sort of stuff or not. Yeah. <laughs> she taught me how to read tarot, uh, how to, yeah, read tarot cards when I was a teenager. Um, I remember she did a reading for me once and she was like, 
I mean, these were her exact words. I promise. I'm not. I'm. I'm not like just dramatizing this. It's her exact words. Where you have the gift. That's what she said. Do you have the gift? And I never believed her because like she'd been like talking to dead people since she was like three, right? She, <laughs> she could just like see ghosts and everything, right? Whereas I never have. I've never had anything like that at all. So I just never believed her. I never held much stock by it. And I was like, nah, she's wrong about me, man. I'm not psychic or anything like that. Warm but then. I've never seen a ghost or anything like that, but I swear to God, I know things are going to happen before they do, and it freaks me out sometimes, because I will have, like, sometimes it's an actual dream, and sometimes it's like a daydream, but I'm just, like, daydreaming about something, and I'll daydream about something, like, really weirdly specific, and then it'll happen, and it, it, and it happens a lot with, like, common reoccurrence. <laughs> Or I, yeah, I'll have a dream, and then the thing that I dreamed will happen, like, exactly, like, it'll, it'll be like a, it's usually stupid little things, like a conversation or something like that, just a random conversation, and then that random conversation will happen word for word exactly as I saw it. It freaks me out, man. I try not to think about it too much. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there we go, off on another tangent. Um, um, uh, uh. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, uh, soulmate has those too. Of course you do. You're my soulmate. You're just me, aren't you? <laughs> uh. mm -hmm. On the cusp of Scorpio Sagittarius. My brother is a Sagittarius. I'm a Scorpio. Hmm. Funny thing is, we were both due on the same date. Well, not on the same day, because there's a 14-year age gap between us. 13 years. Is he 13 years older than me? I think he's 13 years older than me. So obviously we weren't due on, on exactly the same day. But, like, we, we, the, the due date for both of us was the same. I can't remember what it was. It was November the something. And I ended up being born earlier on November the 8th, and he was born later on December the 1st. So there you go. Uh, we're just talking now, aren't we, while I just walk around dinner room. Uh. Mm -hmm. Um. Talking about psychics. It's all nonsense, says Timothy. Oh, Timothy. More things in heaven and earth, man. <laughs> thing is about astrology i always think right so there's, there's there's certain things that is like fact so like it is fact that there are more disappearances and murders and crimes in general during a full moon right that is just fact right the number there are statistics and numbers that back that up right and there's kind of theories that like because the the moon the gravitational pull of the moon affects like you know the tides and stuff like that maybe it affects hormones as well you know maybe it literally does affect our brains and it's like if the moon can do that why can't the planets do that and things like you know i mean we're all connected each particle is connected to another particle you know you move your hand and, you, and the particles in your hand touch the particles in the air is it really such a leap to think that maybe the movement of planets light years away have some effect on us as humans is it really such a leap? Really? I mean, come on, let's face it. There's more we don't know than we do. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying, guys. <laughs> um, I pronounce due date as due date. How do you pronounce Jew then? not convincing people on the whole astrology thing. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Um, yeah. I, I just personally believe that we just don't know anything, really. I think we just don't know anything about the world. We think we know things, and we don't, really. Most of the things that we, like, know end up getting disproved, and then those things get disproved, and then, like, things get disproved some more, you know. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, Fred, are we going to have to ban Jew from the air? <laughs> That's a word that we could use. I don't know how else you would say Jew, as in D-U-E. Jew. Like, how else would you... <laughs> How in hell, how else would you say it? I'm gonna have to like, look up on YouTube how Americans say it, because I don't know. Um. <laughs> uh, I think we're just gonna spend the next 15 minutes just talking about stuff. Pronounce the D? Yeah, I do pronounce the D. Jew. D-U, Jew. Um. <laughs> Pronounce Jew the same way as do. Oh, fuck off. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's like the way you pronounce tuna, isn't it? It's like, I don't even want to say it. I can't make myself say it. But I know. <laughs> well, you, you sort of pronounce the, like, the, t the T more than the U. And like tuna. Because it's T-U, which is chew, right? Chew. But then, across the pond, you pronounce the, like, the emphasis is on the T. You know what I mean? But it's T-U, which is chew. T-U. Chew. Chew. That's, yeah, that's how you pronounce it. I think tuna and tube. And things like that, you know. Do you do the same with, like, D-U? Which is, because D-U is chew. <laughs> D-U. Chew. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, what li li what little devil wrote that? That's how you pronounce it. I can't make myself say it. I can't bring myself to. I can't. It just it goes against my principles. <laughs> um. Repeat after me, says Timothy. Give the devil his due. Give the devil his due. <laughs> um, I can hear this cat screeching behind me. Oh, what, Squeaky? What's the matter? Do you want to come up here? Because we're not going to do anything for the rest of this live stream anyway. We're just we're just chatting now. <laughs> it's it's one of those live streams. Hey, what's up, Squeaky? What's the matter? Don't scratch the back of my chair. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> um. Uh, oi, this is a very expensive chair. Stop sticking your claws in it. Come here. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Come up here, Rachel. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. There you go. Come up here. Like purr into the microphone or something. They'd like that. <laughs> She's so squeaky, says common misconception. Yeah, she is. Very squeaky. <laughs> Very squeaky, aren't you? I call her squeaky and squeak. That's like her nickname. And squeaky McSqueak face. That's like her proper nickname. That's <laughs> what I call you, isn't it? Squeaky McSqueak face. Because you squeak. Uh... Uh, yeah. <laughs> squeaky McSqueak face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Are you going? Are you going? She's going. Okay. I don't think we have anything else we really need to do. Oh, we've got this, haven't we? Uh, have we collected all the love letters yet? I don't think we have because it would be telling us to... Actually, do you know what? We can check, man. We can check with flipping inventory, can't we? See how many love letters we've got. We've got 11, we need 12. Ooh. Nobody's asked us for the corpse goals yet. Shouldn't somebody have asked us for the corpse goals? I feel 
like somebody should... Can you remember who wants the corpse skulls? I'm sure that it was the Mages Collective. Oh my god. Hiccups. Um, have I missed a Mages Collective bug? What? What's the matter, Squeaks? You're too squeaky, aren't you? They are sinners who have given themselves. Too squeaky. Hmm. 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 Yeah. And then we need 15 toxin extracts. Oh my god. Do we have any toxin extracts? We have four. Where do you get toxin extracts from? Who would sell toxin extracts? Uh, supposed to be a chantry board quest. Um, let's see, because I might have just like, I might have just, you know, not clicked on it or something. Uh. What's the plan for the lambs meet? Well, uh, yes, Alistair is going to be king on his own. I've hardened him, so he's going to be a good king. Um, Loghain will end up dead, I think. Well, he has to, I think, doesn't he? Are the only options him dying or becoming a Grey Warden? I think they are. I don't think you can imprison him or anything, can you? Or can you? Ah, I can't remember. Um, but yes, he's going to end up dead. Uh, Alistair will be king. I don't know what's going to happen to Anora because I usually make Anora queen on most of my playthroughs. Because I like her. I like Anora. I know she's not a loved character, but I like her. Um, you know, she's got sass. Um... I think she'd be a good queen. I just genuinely think that she'd be better than Alistair, to be honest. <laughs> um, so I can't really remember what happens with Anora. I think you can have her executed, I think. Can you? Or you can have her imprisoned. I can't quite remember, so I haven't really decided what we're going to do with Anora yet. But yes, Alistair will become king. Uh... Um... Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're going to do the dark ritual as well. So nobody's going to die killing the archdemon or anything like that. And Morrigan's going to get a old god baby. Don't think you can kill her, can you not? I'm sure you could have her executed. Hmm. But yes, anyway, that's it. that is the current plan. I'm literally just wandering around the market now. I've just got nothing to do. I, don't, I just don't want to wrap up yet. I'm just enjoying our chats. <laughs> I'm enjoying our chats, but I've kind of got nothing left to do. Um, uh, like leaving Honora as queen and keeping Alistair as a Grey Warden. Yeah. Although in my canon playthrough... <laughs> my canon playthrough is a bit tragic. Uh, <laughs> it's not like tragic tragic, but like in my, ca so in my canon playthrough, this is what happens. And this is just like what happened. It was my second playthrough that I did because my first playthrough was a bit of a disaster. So then I created a new character and did a second playthrough and that like became my canon kind of playthrough. But you know when you're just like muddling through and you don't know the game that well and things just end up happening. So she romanced Alistair, right? But um, there's a line and it's bugged and I can't remember what it is where when you're in a romance with Alistair, there's one bit where you, you sort of ask him like where it's going between you or something like that. And he reacts really negatively, but it's a bug. He's not meant to. And it doesn't like cancel the romance out or anything like that. But I was playing, I was playing my character as a bit of like, she's a, she's a city elf. And I'm sort of playing her as a bit of a, not quite a car crash, but like somebody who makes bad decisions sometimes. Like generally she's a good person. She's, she's very heroic. She saves the world. You know, she's that kind of person. But she sort of had this idea that, you know, she drinks a bit too much. <laughs> Has a bit of a foul mouth, you know, sleeps with the wrong people. That kind of thing. You know, is sometimes just a bit impulsive and daft. So after this weird conversation with Alistair, which, you know, was bugged. Um, 
I sort of thought, well, maybe actually we'll just we'll just keep that in as that happened, right? And she reacts really negatively. So then she went off into the city, right? And I had it in my head, like, right, she just gets drunk, she ends up at the Pearl, and she sleeps with Isabella and Severin. <laughs> right? <laughs> Feels really guilty about it, but doesn't tell Alistair. <laughs> and then um, she refuses to do the... Um, the... Uh, the ritual with Morrigan and Alistair dies killing the Archdemon <laughs> never knowing that she cheated on him with Severin and Isabella it's a bit tragic it's a bit tragic yeah um... oh man <laughs> that might make some of you angry I realise but yeah that's my canon playthrough that's what happens in my canon Alistair dies killing the uh, Archdemon and Honora becomes queen um uh, uh. <laughs> Having Alistair marry Nora? Yep, I'm gonna do that on one playthrough. We're gonna have a playthrough where. In fact, you know what? Since we've, we we'll go for like another ten minutes. But since I've got nothing to do, I tell you what. I will be back in one second because I've got it all written down. And I'll go through it with you. I'll be back in like one second. You can have like one second of the kitten break screen. Right, okay. So... So we're doing eight playthroughs. We're going to have to redo Constance's playthrough because I messed up a lot of the things that we did with her. Um, so we're probably going to redo it. Uh, <laughs> you know, just give yourself more work. Right, so... Um, I'm not going to tell you what happens with each one. It, like, you know, because it'll... You know, it'll ruin it. <laughs> um... Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, so, yes, yeah, so we're going to have one city elf, one common dwarf, uh, a human mage, a dalish elf, an elven mage, a noble dwarf, a, a female human noble, and then a male human noble. Because the goal overall is to uh, sort of experience every possible ending, almost. I don't think you can really do that in eight playthroughs, you'd need more than that. But, like, you know, all of, like, the, the major decisions, so... We've got, yeah, hang on, I'm just reading what I've written. Right, so I've got one warden who's going to die killing the Archdemon. We've got one playthrough where Alistair dies killing the Archdemon. We've got one playthrough where Loghain dies killing the Archdemon. We have got one, no, we've got two playthroughs where Morrigan completes the dark ritual with Alistair. We've got one playthrough where... Morrigan completes the dark ritual with Loghain and we've got two playthroughs where Morrigan completes the dark rit ritual with the Warden. In one of those she's in a romance with him and in the other one she's not. But I need to double check whether you can complete the dark ro uh, ritual with her if you're not in a romance with her because I'm not 100% certain. Um, we have got three playthroughs where Honora rules alone. We've got two playthroughs where Alistair rules alone, one where he's hardened and one where he's softened. So this is the one where he's hardened. Um, we have got one where Alistair and Honora marry and rule. We've got one where Honora and the Warden marry and rule, which is obviously going to be the male human noble, which is, which is why we need a male human noble and a female human noble. Because then we're going to have one where <coughs> Alistair and the Warden marry and rule together. Although they're not going to be in a romance. <laughs> and in that playthrough with the female human noble, so at the end she's going to marry Alistair to like rule beside him as queen. But she's not in a romance with him. It's, uh, it's a political marriage. And she's in a romance with Liliana. Now, <laughs> there is, <laughs> I have one, there is one specific reason that I have done this, right? She's going to be in a romance with Liliana and Liliana is going to be hardened because if Liliana is hardened, and she's in a romance with a human noble 
who then marries Alistair, she will agree to stay on as, like, um, you know, your lover. Um, so, like, you know, she's married to Alistair, which is, like, a political thing, and then Liliana stays on as the lover. And if you do that, in Inquisition, when you go to the ball at the Winter Palace thing, and she's being introduced when she enters, she is introduced as... Um, mistress to the Queen of Ferelden. And that, that's like literally it. That's the reason I want to do that. Just to get that one lane in Inquisition. Because it's just really cool that she gets introduced as like mistress to the uh, to the Queen of Ferelden. Um, yeah, so that, that's my plan. I've got it all planned out. I know what's going to happen with each person. Um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's what, and then I'm also planning my inquisitors as well and I'm going to match up my inquisitors to my wardens and then the hawks I think I'm just going to like figure that out as we go because there's not as much um, room for uh, you know variety with hawk so for the inquisitors I've got one human mage a human noble uh, a dalish hunter a dalish first a carter dwarf Female, a quarter, carter, blah, carter dwarf, male, a Talvashoff, and a Sarabas. Yeah, that's what we're gonna have. And I'm sort of, I'm currently trying to like match them all up. I'm gonna have each playthrough is gonna have like a theme. <laughs> oh, it's all gonna be well planned, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Right, we'd better wrap up, I suppose. We've got nearly four dollars. Doesn't feel like it, you know. I could probably go for another hour, but we don't really have anything to do, so, you know. Um, plus, I need to be in bed. <laughs> I need to be in bed eventually. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the Dwarf Noble playthrough can have several bastard children. You are right, Fred. We're definitely going to do that, just because we can. He's going to be one of our slightly um, nasty characters. So the noble dwarf and the human noble male are both going to be a bit nasty. So, yeah. And our city elf, Elia, she's my cannon warden. She's a warrior who fights with sword and shield. And then we've got common dwarf, is Ghidorah Bella, obviously, dual wielding rogue. And we've got human mage, Constance. Dalish Elf is Shakar, who is going to be a rogue archer. Uh, Elven Mage, Alviv... Uh, oh my god, what, what the fuck? I find these names online, you know, I kind of like look up meanings of names and I just kind of go, oh cool, and then I'm like, I didn't pronounce that. Alviva, I think it is. That sounds like a good name for an Elven Mage, doesn't it? Uh, and then Noble Dwarf is Kaderan, which means, I think, Warrior Prince? Something like that. In possibly Welsh, actually. Welsh friend. It's either Welsh or Irish. I can't quite remember. Uh, our human noble female is Shiva. That's Irish. Spelled S-O-I-M-H-A. Pronounced Shiva. Uh, and our human noble male is Finley, who is a dual-wielding rogue, and Shiva is a... Um, Two-handed warrior and Kaderan is a sword and shield warrior. There we go. See, I've got it all planned. I've got it all planned. Elia romances Alistair. Dorabella romances Zevran. Constance romances Liliana, but it's not going to end well. Um, Shakar romances Morrigan. Alviva romances Alistair, and it's going to have a better ending than Elia's. Kaderan doesn't romance anyone. Shiva romances Liliana, and it is a happy ending. Uh, and Finley romances... Well, I've got Zevran in as a placeholder, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, we might change that around. Uh, yeah. Uh. Yes, okay, we need to wrap up. We need to wrap up. We've gone over four hours, man. I've got nothing else to do. Unless you want to hear about my wardens. <laughs> uh, not my wardens, my inquisitors. <laughs> Have I got names for all of them? I can't remember if I've got names for all of them. Uh, 
Yes, I do. That names for all of them. And I've got almost all of the romances. How many romances are there in uh, Inquisition? Iron Bull, Black Wall, Cullen, Dorian, Solus, Sarah, Cassandra, Josephine. I feel like I'm missing someone. And Harding. But I don't think she really counts. Um, yeah. I find the romances a lot harder in Inquisition. Because there's more, um, like, uh, restrictions placed upon them. You've got Iron Bull will sleep with anybody. You know, he's fine. Black Wall uh, can only be romanced by a woman. Cullen can only be romanced by a woman, but also only human and elven. He won't go for dwarves or canary. Dorian can only be romanced by men. Solus can only be romanced by female elves. Um, Sarah can only be romanced by women. Harding can be romanced by anybody, if you, if you count that as a romance. Cassandra can only be romanced by um, men. And then Josephine can only be can can be romanced by anybody um but just like the fact that there's more restrictions on them means like it's harder to fit them in do you know what i mean like to eight playthroughs because like, you've got to like fit them to the right person and it's just i don't know it's a bit harder to do um <laughs> so i don't know if we're going to manage to do all of the romances but yeah you know there we go and i'm trying to like you know match up me uh the inquisitors doing warmers anyway really really do need to wrap up because you know me i will just sit here and waffle forever um uh um uh soulmate says yes please what you want to hear about my inquisitors <laughs> Welsh friend likes waffles. Oh man, okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you a bit about my inquisitors, and then we'll go, alright? And we'll go. So, Human Mage. This is the one that I'm writing. This is my canon one. This is the one that I'm writing the in-depth fan fiction about the Ostwick one. Her name is Orchid. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Orchid Trevelyan. I mean it's a good name, right? Fred seemed to like it. Because it's one of those names where I'm like, either people are going to like it and they're going to think that's cool, or they're going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> they're going to be like, who the fuck would name that kid Orchid? Like, really? You named your hero Orchid? Are you serious? <laughs> so I was like, oh, but I kind of like it. Uh, but part of the story is that our mother was a bit mad. And like, her father named all of her brothers, and then her mother named like her and her sister, and her and her sister just got kind of slightly odd names. Like, that is like genuinely part of the story. Like, her mother was just a bit loopy. Um, called our orchid um and then so that's the human mage and then i like to do it as though like all of them exist in each world you know what i mean <coughs> i do that with the uh with the wardens as well so like you know whichever one i'm playing as all of the others exist they just didn't become the warden or i do the same with um the inquisitors so if you play as a human mage obviously uh, i mean you're you're a trevelyan you're part of the Trevelyan family, but you're, uh, you know, you're a mage, so you grew up in the tower. Whereas if you play as a human noble, you are also a Trevelyan, but obviously, you know, you don't grow up in the tower. So I've got my human mage, who is Orchid, and then I've got my human noble, who is Aurora, who is Orchid's sister. Um, and, it, you know, in some, in, in one universe, Orchid becomes the Inquisitor, and in one universe, Aurora becomes the Inquisitor. But in my Ostwick story that I'm writing, Many of these Inquisitors are going to feature. So Orchid's obviously the main character. Aurora is in it because she's Orchid's sister. And then we've got our Dalish Hunter, who is Lafane, which is just a random name I came up with. Um, and he's in it as well because he's like Aurora's mate. Because the thing is, whichever Inquisitor you play as, they're all from Ostwick. So there's a good chance that they all know each other. So, you know. Um, so, like, I'm going to actually have a lot of them in the story. So Lafane is in it. He's my Dalish hunter. He's going to be a, a rogue. Aurora is an archer, by the way. Uh, Orchid is a mage, obviously, who is going to romance Iron Bull. Because <laughs> uh, he's my favourite. Um, Aurora is going to romance either Blackwell or Cullen, but I haven't decided yet. Lafayne is going to romance Dorian. And he's a Dalish hunter. And then we've got the Dalish first, because she's like the Dalish mage. Who is Alina, who's going to romance Solas, because she's the only one who can romance him. Um... And then we've got our Carter Dwarf, Iona, who is going to romance Sarah. And I'm thinking she's going to be the one that's going to follow on from Dora. So we're going to have, like, two Dwarven heroes in our world, maybe. 
And we've got a cart dwarf male is going to be Eli, who is going to be a rogue. And possibly Romance Harding. Um, our Telva Shalth, who is like our um, Canary warrior, is going to be Riordan. That sounds like, like a Canary, like a Telva Shalth kind of name, Riordan. I kind of like that. He's going to be a warrior. And <laughs> I've, I've penciled in that he's going to romance Cassandra, but we'll see. And then our Cerebus, which is our Canary mage, is... Uh... That's not the name I thought I'd given her. Wasn't I going to call her something like... I can't remember what I was going to call her. I've called her Talizan. Was that the name I was going to give her? I can't remember the name I was going to give her. And I've sort of penciled in that she's going to romance Josephine, but again, I'm not 100% certain about that. I don't like the romances in, 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 in Inquisition as much. I like the Iron Bull one, but the rest of them are a bit crap. <laughs> it's got more romances than any of the other games, and yet, like, they're all just a bit crap. So, yeah. Um... um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um, oh, you go back and read through the chat. <laughs> you have a character called what? Cosmo? Cosmos? I is that ice? I, is that icicle? <laughs> I've got some crazy character names in my time. I had like Gypsy Mystery and all sorts when I was a teenager. Some weird shit and Danger Hope and stuff like that. <laughs> Paradise Hope, that was it. I had I had two sisters that I created in The Sims and <laughs> one was called Paradise Hope and the other one was called Danger Hope. I was like 13 in my defence. <laughs> but then I've always liked the idea of having a character called Paradise Hope. I, I, I at some point want a character called Paradise Hope. At some point, I'm gonna find a place for her. Like you know, that's that's Paradise Hope. Flip it, that <laughs> be a great name, man. <laughs> She'd probably be like a drag queen or something. But come on, Paradise Hope. It's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so that, that's what I was thinking about Orchid. I was like, does that sound like something that a 13 year old would come up with? Because I didn't want it to sound like that. But at the same time, I wanted something distinctive. And I really wanted it like a flower name. I can't remember why I wanted a flower name. There was probably a reason. But then I was like, you know, flower names are quite common and I wanted like an uncommon one. And I was like, yeah, Orchid, Orchid, Orchid. And then it kind of grew on me. I was like, yeah, we could have this. We could have Orchid. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, try to think of some of the other random shit I've come up with. <laughs> um, yeah, I've come up with some interesting names in my time. I did. I wrote a random like when I was like a teenager. I wrote this really crazy story. And it was based on a family I'd created in The Sims actually, and they all had weird names. And it was, it was, they were called the Mystery Family. That was like the same name. And it was like a kind of modern day Adams Family, really. And they were all a bit weird. And like one of them was a fairy and one of them was a, uh, I don't know, genie or something like that. It was just like weird stuff. And like just like weird shit would happen. And they all had weird names. So there was like Ambrosia. <laughs> you know, like the custard. <laughs> and then one of them was called Vixen. Um, I'm trying to think what the rest of them were called. One of them was called Gypsy. Ambrosia, Gypsy, and Vixen, and they were sisters. Um, and then they had like a, an adopted daughter who was called Paige, which seemed like really normal compared to the rest of them. Um, I think their brother was called Merlin or something. <laughs> it was just really weird. <laughs> and then they had like a family friend, and I thought she has to be called something like really, really boring. And I called her something, I think it was like Helen Cooper or something like that. It was something like really boring. <laughs> <laughs> It just came up with all these random crazy names. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. John Smith says, well, friend. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. Do we wrap up? It's been like four hours and twelve minutes, guys. Should we just keep talking about names? Weird shit. Um, one of my favourite things is looking up names of characters. I love going on um, behind the name, you know, the website, and just like looking up stuff. Looking up meanings, things like that. Finding weird names for people. Um, just trying to see if there's anything else we can talk about before we go. Yeah. Little devil likes orchids. Okay, that's good. That's good. You, you lot could be my, you know, t test audience. <laughs> she rocks the name, I think. I think she rocks it. She's like, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, sisters, syphilis and gonorrhea. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just reading my own notes now. I love planning things. So yeah, I love like I love. Oh, I love a list. Nothing. There's nothing more I like than sitting down with a nice new notebook and a pencil and just planning shit. I love it. I think it's great. I prefer writing to doing like to like typing. Although when I'm like writing my stories, obviously I type them because that's just easier. But like when you're, uh, you know, when you're planning stuff, I love I love an actual physical book. I can actually like write stuff in. Uh, I don't think what other names I've got for people because I've created like the entire Trevelyan family, you know, on a, a big family tree. There's like a family tree website thing that I found but like not one of the ones where you look up your actual real life family tree it's one where you can just like create a family tree um and I create like the entire Trevelyan family like the whole extended family uh they've got like family members in Ole and Antiva and everything and I've just created the entire family tree of like characters that probably won't even ever appear just <laughs> just like coming up with names for all of them <laughs> I love doing stuff like that and then I've, I've drawn like a map of Ostwick and I've got like you know who lives in every house and everything and just like that, who everybody is and stuff. And I, I love doing so, I love world building. But like, when you do that, what I'm finding now is actually, because I've never put this much work into the backstory before when I'm writing something. I usually kind of do the backstory as I'm going along. But I, what I've found is that when you put that much work into it, writing it becomes a lot easier because you've got all of this like backstory to fall back on. Um, You know, and you can just find a little, like even though most of it will probably never come up, or be relevant or need to be mentioned. It's just like, um, you know, you can just you can just put little things in. I don't know, like like you know, like like I'll have a character, I've, like you know, say I've created a character who's like a baker or something, and lives in this house and does this and this is their daily routine kind of thing. And then like I can maybe just like mention her in passing, or maybe she'll never be used at all. You know, just stuff that just being able to have stuff like that. <sighs> I think because, like, I also write my own stuff. I don't just write fan fiction. I also write, like, my own stuff. But I've always found fan, fan fiction is easier because you've got, a, a like, a world already there and that you can, like, you know, pick bits out of it and, um, you know, reference little bits. And I was like, if you, if, you, if you create an entire world first before you actually start writing the story, that'll be easier, wouldn't it? You know, you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? You probably don't know what I mean. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, Terry Pratchett as a character whose first name was Chlamydia, really? Oh my god. <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah, if you know the backstory, you know how they're going to react in certain situations. Yeah, what I've also found actually while writing this one is that I, I, with each character, I've given them like mannerisms and hobbies and things like that. So there's one where like she whistles a lot, you know, and then there's another one where it's like, oh, she really likes plants and like her office is full of plants. And then there's one who's like, you know, a bit of a perfectionist and everything has to be like perfectly aligned and everything like that. And just, just little things like that that give them more personality. Because I think what I also found was when you're writing characters, because like in this story that I'm writing, this fan friend that I'm writing, almost all the characters are original characters. There's not many actual characters from the game. But what I, I've always found is when I'm writing 
somebody else's characters they're easier to write because they've got mannerisms and stuff especially if it's like something like characters that have been portrayed on telly because when you know you actually see a character and they're being played by an actor and that actor will have mannerisms they'll have like a particular way of talking like also like characters in video games are obviously voiced by someone so you know they'll have like particular inflections and just a way of talking and a, a tone of their voice and stuff like that and you can put those things in and it just gives them so much more life whereas when you're creating your own character you don't have any of that and I was sort of like well maybe I need to give them some of that I need to give them little mannerisms little hobbies little interests just like little somethings about them to make them individual and unique you know um like you know do they fidget do they bite their nails do they always tuck their hair behind their ear just something like that that they always do to just give them these little you know to just breathe more life into them um yeah that's another thing um uh, we've been going for four hours and 18 minutes <laughs> is magpie ever gonna shut up <laughs> um yeah yeah been a bit of funny mood tonight i think i'm on i think i'm on i'm high on sugar i've eaten too much cake or something you know what i'm like when i get high on sugar you know when i'm sitting here eating chocolate and stuff like that we always just end up going on for age and age ages because i get a bit hyper <laughs> i get a bit hyper um yeah should we wrap up? Should we wrap up or should we keep talking crap? I think I've run out of things to say. Um, should we wrap up? We'll wrap up, shall we? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go back into the... Um, the... Yes, the manor house place. The estate. I keep forgetting that word. We'll go back into the estate. Uh, back in here. There we go. And then we can start off in the estate, you see. Uh, <laughs> Fred's waiting for the chocolate high to fade. Yeah. Um, uh, why do you need drugs when you've got chocolate, eh? <laughs> um, album cover coming up. That is a good point, Welsh friend. Oh my god, but it's going to be a solo album cover. Now, our album cover in the uh, in the uh, the camp is always like with the moon behind her, isn't it? But we need... Oh, there's some pretty paintings. We could have that as an album cover. Oh, we've got this whole place to explore to find an album cover. Oh, we could zoom right out, man, in here. We'll get the servant in the background. <laughs> we could have Dora just like standing menacingly over a servant. That could be some kind of like poetic uh, album cover. That's quite good, actually. Oh, with the pictures behind her. Okay, we'll try a bit further up. Hmm. Random maid blocking the doorway. Don't stand in the doorway, random maid. Dear me, there's people more important than you who need to be passed. Um, ooh, maybe here with the two statues flanking her, although she looks so dinky. <laughs> Look how dinky she looks. She looks so little. Um, that's the same picture as what he's got in the front hall, isn't it? I have two copies of the same painting. Uh, oh, ooh, that's a bit fancy. Where's that meant to be? I don't know where that's meant to be. That's a nice picture, though. Oh, we could have a like standing under the statue. Uh, oh, where's that? That looks like Haven, doesn't it? That couldn't possibly be Haven. That would be weird. Um, mm, I put a lot of effort into these album covers, right, guys? Like, you know got to bear with me a bit. Uh, my bedroom. Yeah, I always wonder why Morrigan stands in my bedroom. And Sten. Um, <laughs> Sten and Morrigan. Don't, it's, it's, Sten and Morrigan just hang out in my bedroom. Bit weird, isn't it? Uh, see if we can get that codex entry. Codex entry. Codex entry, reveal yourself to me. I know I must be able to click on you somewhere. There we go. Uh, oh, the uh, book about Paul Volan is right next to Sten. Or, or I know what we could do as an album cover. We could do like me and Morrigan. No, 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 no. I want you facing that way, Dora. Yeah, but like not that far forward. Right, here we go. Me and Morrigan like staring at each other. Trouble is I won't be able to get it centered on the camera, will I? Unless I go right out. Hey, Morrigan's trying to warm herself on the fire and the fire's like over there. 
Yeah, and me and Morgan just like staring each other down. Eh. Eh. I don't know. Or like standing next to each other with Sten just awkwardly in the background. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, where should we where should we go? Where should we have our album cover, man? Hmm. Is that in here? Hang on a minute. What if we have it like there? With the whole hall behind her. But then like with like the door frame in it? Oh. That's cool. I like that. We'll do it up there. Like we do it like mm, uh, mm, do we want the corridor up there visible or do we want a head to look at it? With the, look at the banners flanking our man, that's all oh, that's an album cover. That's it. What if we well, we can't zoom in anymore? Mm. I like that. Yeah, that's an album cover, guys. That's it, that's the album, that's it, that's it. We've done that, yeah, that's it, that's the album cover. That is Dora Bella solo album. Um, Dora Bella live at the Dunham Palace says Fred. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's the album cover. Right, okay, so after four hours and 23 minutes, which I think is a record, uh, we shall wrap this up here. We shall be back on Tuesday, which is Halloween at 1.30 GMT. Uh, and we shall get started on Denerim. I don't think I'm going to bother with any of the side quests that we haven't done yet, except the ones that we need to get into the alienage for. I kind of be asked going back to the Brazilian forest and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we will start on the Denerim stuff. We'll do, do you do alienage first or do you do the estate first? You do the estate first, don't you, I think? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, we'll get started on that. We might even get both done if we're, you know, proper snappy. And then there'll just be the lands meet and then the final battle. Yeah, we're at the end game, guys. And then we're going to do Awakening and then we'll do Witch Hunt and then we'll do Dragon Age 2. Very exciting. Very exciting. Anyway, yeah. So, um, <laughs> see you all on all, says Fred. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. See you on Tuesday, everybody. I shall uh, start the screen up and I shall say goodbye.